The views expressed by our guests in the following video are solely the opinions of our guests and do not necessarily reflect the views and or opinions of the Ola 7 podcast show. Viewer discretion is advised. Hello guys, my name is DJ Ola7 Owen, we're Kwama Don, and welcome to yet another exciting episode of On The Spot. This is the show where we sit down with the most important personalities in business, entertainment, sports, and politics. Tonight, we have a special guest, a lawyer, politician, and the leader of the Movement for Democratic Change, MDC Party. He's a man, you know, who's been in the spotlight for many years, and we are thrilled to have him with us on the spot. Please welcome Senator Douglas Mwanzora. Welcome, say how are you? Uh, thank you very much, uh, DJ Ola. And uh, I want to thank you for inviting me to your show. Um, I don't take the invitation for granted at all. That's my pleasure. <laughs> and uh, Mr. Mwanzora, we know, uh, welcome to the show. Baba, rare, panega show, kaka, kaka, song, kaka, boy, it was so that you could take on a light or not, you know. I cannot say, ahe, that's the name of the song. So, pale party, I want to do your. Marin do da faith is say I'm a duku zaga fanana neku anzi neku kama woku do da full chicken kwete nzondora and this a gumire munzi la fanika nzondora you know how do you take such you know social media humor? Well, it was on a lighter spot and uh, it was coming from something that I had I actually said. Okay. Uh, and it was during the funeral of uh, the late Jairus Sekwa, mm -hmm. uh, and I said that uh, I had had a dream mm -hmm. uh, that one day uh, was. We are being counted. Yeah. Monzora, um, Nangagwa, yes. Monzora and Nangagwa. <laughs> and then the person got tired of Monzora because it's such a long. <laughs> so Akanga got ra, ra, ra. Ra. I remember. Yes. So <laughs> when uh, when uh, the singer wanted to use that, mm -hmm. uh, they actually told me. Yeah. They wanted to use that okay um and that i shouldn't feel offended mm -hmm. and i was free to listen to uh the music before it was published oh yes. nice um i sent a guy called benjamin Yandoro to do that mm -hmm. uh, and i said no uh, i am a believer in freedom of expression yes and the freedom of opinion mm -hmm. and whatever your opinion is yeah publish it, <laughs> it as is yeah and you went ahead i have had opinion occasion to listen to it yeah it is quite hilarious <laughs> so when, when i played that song for the first time you know I, I remember i'm the one who played for the first time on radio uh when i invited baba to the studio and he said okay let's sample the let's have a listen get more share when we were listening to the song then I, that's when i heard rah, rah. I got, okay did you talk to <laughs> <laughs> so at least you have confirmed that uh, you know magaja my discussions you know uh, before. So apart to my chance to go you through to or so uh, most of the people just don't take you know serious. You know uh, what kind of a person are you uh, off politics? Off politics. Well, off politics. Uh, I'm a family man. Mm -hmm. um, I have uh, children who are now adults. Mm -hmm. uh, most of them, and these children, I'm very happy that God blessed me with extremely academically gifted children. Wow. Um, and they all uh, went to university mm -hmm. and they did well. Wow. And they are now working for themselves. Mm. But uh, we find time to discuss social life, mm -hmm. um, especially um, and economic life as well. Mm. Uh, the issues about production, uh, creation of wealth. Mm -hmm. um, I, I, I discuss that with them uh, quite a lot. That... Uh, it is high time that as Africans, they must know how to create wealth. Mm -hmm. Yes, it is good to be educated. They have the education, but they must know, they must have the economic education mm. to create wealth for themselves. Great. And I'm happy that uh, uh, they are trying to do that. Mm -hmm. So when you are out of the office, what should, would you be do doing out of the office? Well, I read a lot. Mm. Um, I read about three books mm -hmm. a week. A week? Yes. Um, I read quite a lot, and unfortunately, I have uh, less hours of sleep. Mm. Um, I don't know what happened, but I sleep very, 
very little. <laughs> uh, so I read, I read quite a lot. Mm-hmm. I am writing as well. Uh, and uh, your own book? Yes, I'm writing a book. Mm-hmm. Uh, I don't know the topic yet, <laughs> uh, but it is it is a book where I'm telling my story. Okay, because I have been so misrepresented mm. uh, in with the within the propaganda in the country. Yeah, uh, I did a book called. Um, the public participation under African nationalism, mm-hmm. uh, under African, um, uh, sorry, public participation in African constitutionalism. Okay. Uh, with other authors in mm-hmm. Europe mostly. Uh, and uh, I did a, a chapter on public participation under authoritarian rule wow. in the case of Zimbabwe. Mm-hmm. I have also done a work uh, called. Um, the problems of our civilization mm-hmm. in African perspective. Mm-hmm. Uh, unfortunately, this book, I wrote it while I was in Holland. Okay. And I did not know that they were going to reduce it into a book. Mm. Uh, and when they sent me a copy, uh, the only thing I could read about my book was my name. <laughs> uh, because it, it is written in Dutch. Oh, yes. I see. So, uh, and also, I like sport. Mm-hmm. Uh, in my in my younger days, I was an athlete. Okay. Uh, when I was in Goromon's High School, I ran 400 meters, and I was the school champion for that time. I'm shocked. I also then became the Mashona Land East champion mm-hmm. and became the national champion <laughs> in 400 meters. Um, in the National Sports Stadium, I beat the reigning champion that time, mm-hmm. uh, and his name was Elijah Nkala. Wow. And it was, uh, it was quite fulfilling to beat such a champion. Yes, true, true. Wow, that's amazing. And I, I, I'm sure you guys didn't know all, all this about um, Senator Douglas uh, Nguanzora. And I'm sure by the end of this program, I should data like I wonder about who Senator Nguanzora is. So, Omar, I'm not here music here and we be music. Yes, uh, I not only, not only do I listen to music, mm-hmm. Uh, but sometimes I produce music. Wow. Uh, I, I sing. Um, and uh, I used to sing at rallies. Uh-huh. And when I saw that uh, the people in the MDC liked the songs, uh-huh. I then decided to go to the studio. And record and the songs. We recorded, yes. Wow. With a guy called Murimoga. We recorded a uh-huh. song which they like so much. Uh-huh. It's called Sikam Tanda. Uh-huh. Uh, and the other one, which... Um, I'm sure Tendai BT doesn't like. Uh-huh. Uh, it's called Ngavayende. <laughs> and that was the time when Tendai BT and company had left the party. Oh. So it was direct. It was, it was a diss song. At, at them, yes. It was a diss song. Yes. <laughs> so I listened to a lot of music, mm-hmm. a lot of genres. Yeah. Um, Sungura, mm-hmm. I listened to that. Wow. Uh, Simon Chimbetu, mm-hmm. Sumani. Um, Tuku, no, no, Tuku doesn't sing Sungura. Yes. Um, Chibadura. Yes. Uh, I also listen to Solomon Skuza. Wow. Uh, Vana, wow. Um, Penga Uzoke. Uh-huh. Uh, I listen to that. <laughs> um, also reggae. Uh-huh. Reggae, of course, was the in thing when we were our boys. Oh, yeah. Bob Mali, uh, Bunny Whaler, mm-hmm. Peter Tosh, ETC, ETC. Great. Now, let's get into business. Um, so, uh, Mr. Mozera, let's start with your, your background. Where were you born and what was your upbringing like? I was born uh, in 1968. Uh, I was born at Regina Shelley Hospital. Mm -hmm. It was a mission hospital. Right. Uh, I'm told that when we were born, we were twins. Mm -hmm. I was the weaker one. Oh. Uh, Unfortunately, um, my my twin didn't make it. Mm -hmm. Um, Then I stayed with an aunt at Claymont in Yanga Orchards Mm -hmm. uh, for major part of my uh, preschool mm-hmm. life yeah uh, before I went to uh, school in Madziwa school in Nyanga uh, I was staying then with my grandparents mm-hmm. my paternal grandparents yeah my father's uh, father and mm-hmm. my father's mother yeah um, and these were church going people mm-hmm. uh, they were church going people my grandfather he had uh, fought in the Second World War. Oh, uh, in Egypt, yes. Mm-hmm. Uh, but when he came from Egypt, he was now completely anglicized. Oh, um, and uh, I was uh, brought up uh, well. I was kind of spoiled, mm-hmm. I think, uh, <laughs> because with that, I couldn't wish for better. Yeah, than to grow up with your grandparents. Yeah, um, and from there, I went to Saint Mary's Magdalene's Mission mm-hmm. in, in uh, Nyanga for 
my secondary. Mm -hmm. Then from there, I went to Goromon's High School uh, before I went to the University of Zimbabwe. Mm. Yes, I then went to other universities later, uh, later on in my life, mm -hmm. including the Central European University in Budapest. Okay. Yes. Yeah, that's a, that's a huge profile. And also, you know, looking back at where you uh, came from. And uh, uh, one would want to know how big is your family now? Like you said earlier, you've got, uh, you know, all your kids are now adults and also some of them back to Pedzama University. We always see um Betha on X. <laughs> Donna Ari Momo social media, you know, speaking her mind, you know, as well. Uh we don't know other politics or are we join Namdara or is she the only one who is much interested in politics or maybe all of them? I, I think there are there are surprises coming mm -hmm. and I don't want to preempt them. Wow. Uh but Betha is what you'd this daughter okay she happens to be my first born oh yeah uh, and uh, when she saw uh, this uh, misrepresentation mm -hmm. uh, by the people especially on social media yes mm -hmm. on, I just found her on the social media mm -hmm. uh, defending her dad um, I couldn't have wished for for more mm -hmm. and uh, what is important for me on Beta is that she's extremely intelligent. Mm -hmm. She has emotional intelligence. Wow. Um, and she has got the energy mm -hmm. and she has the willingness and the ability to fight. Okay. So I do not have to defend her. She defends herself. <laughs> so Sometimes Beta, Beta she defends is, daddy. Yes. <laughs> in fact, most of the times. Yes. <laughs> she's yes. in daddy's corner. Yes. Okay. While well, growing up, uh, growing up, Ever thought you'd uh, you'd find yourself in politics one day? Maybe briefly take us through your political journey. How did you get involved? It was a bit funny uh, because in two thousand in, in nineteen eighty three, mm -hmm. uh, I stood up in front of my class and I told them that I'll be an MP. Wow! In on the eleventh of June in nineteen eighty four, mm -hmm. uh, that was the day uh, the chief Rekai Tamwena died. Mm -hmm. I stood up in front of the class and told them that I was going to be a senator. Wow! And uh, I told everyone that from Senate House it will be State House. Hey! So um, most of the things have tended to happen. Yeah. Um, Except for the and, state house one, yeah, state house has not yet come. <laughs> uh, you know, it's yet uh, to come. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, Macbeth. Uh, if you have read Macbeth, um, there was a, a time he says, uh, um, uh, I think he was talking about uh, the things that had come, mm -hmm. and he says uh, he has now been ten of Glamis, yes, ten of Caldo. Uh -huh. The greatest is behind. Wow. Because they had said, Macbeth, thou shalt, thou shalt be king of England. Mm. I have gone through what a typical politician who will be president mm -hmm. will have to go through. Okay. Uh, a lot of misrepresentation, mm -hmm. a lot of struggle, arrested 34 times. Oh. Yes, including um, the first arrest I was uh, a, a third year law student mm. at the University of Zimbabwe. Mama and my crime, my crime had been that I had written the constitution of the Zimbabwe Unity Movement. Oh, I was there yeah. detained in Wawa prison mm -hmm. uh, for 10 days, mm -hmm. tortured in Wawa prison. The ironic thing is that the people who tortured me in Wawa prison mm -hmm. became MPs uh, during the time that I was an MP. Mm -hmm. So we were in parliament together with my tormentors. Mm. And what was interesting is that they became members of the Legal uh, Justice and Parliamentary Affairs Committee, mm. which I was chairing. Oh. So we, we, we <laughs> sat together in the same parliament, the same committee <laughs> with my commanders. Uh, and unfortunately, they're late now. Oh, all of them now? Both of them, yes. Okay. Uh, you once worked at, uh, you know, Paul Mangwana's uh, law firm and uh, later fired, you know, because of the matter that was in, you know, that involved um, the late former Prime Minister Abiyom Zorewa. Uh, can you tell us, you know, what really transpired? Yeah, what transpired is that uh, after working for ZCTU, mm -hmm. I was then employed by Mangwana and Partners. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, Honorable Mangwana went for honeymoon with his wife, mm -hmm. uh, lovely wife Pauline. Yeah. Uh, left me in charge. And the, the 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 instruction was to produce. Mm -hmm. We were a law firm. Yeah. And uh, the most important thing was to produce. Mm -hmm. And I remember I had negotiated for uh, the firm to buy me a, a new car, mm -hmm. a car. <laughs> um, and it was uh, uh, 
uh, a box sunny uh-huh. and that was the trendy car at that point at that time yeah uh, and um, while uh, while i was um, uh, working as the as the head of the firm mm-hmm. temporary head of the firm uh, a number of uh, clients came mm-hmm. including bishop abom zorewa yeah. he came and said that he had heard that uh, there is a lawyer whose skill mm-hmm. he may want yeah Uh, so i interviewed him and he told me that he wanted to challenge mm. the constitutionality of the political parties finances act mm-hmm. at that point in time yeah he also wanted me to challenge the electoral act the constitutionality of the electoral act mm-hmm. uh, and so on so i told him what the fee would be mm-hmm. he paid us and that was what was the most important to me at that point in time I then read the I, I then researched the case for a day mm-hmm. um spent the whole night drafting the application mm-hmm. the following day I was in the Supreme Court filing the application mm-hmm. to my surprise as soon as I had filed the application mm-hmm. uh is and I was going out of the Supreme Court yeah. the registry's office mm. Uh, I met Ruben Barwe with his crew. Uh, and he says, "Mr. Monzora, you have just uh, filed a case mm-hmm. which may be a landmark case in this country. Yeah. Can you tell us about it?" Mm-hmm. So I was explaining. Mm-hmm. Um and at eight o'clock during the news, it was the the news. The news, yeah. Um and Mr. Mangwana was watching the news mm. uh, from his hotel. At first he was very happy. Mm-hmm. He phoned me about it. and i told him about the case yeah but uh, sooner uh, he was under pressure from zanu pf politicians the Russia. ruling party yes who told him that uh, who complained to him that he was fighting the mm-hmm. president he mm-hmm. was fo- fighting zanu pf and so on yeah so when honorable mangwana came he asked me to drop the case mm-hmm. i refused he said no i said no i said uh, this goes against the legal ethics mm-hmm. a client comes with a case mm-hmm. we take up the case we charge them mm-hmm. um, we should uh, we should uh, save we should s- save them yeah so i refused to drop the case mangwada took about a week trying to persuade me to drop the case hey. i refused so you you challenged your superior then well i stuck to principle mm-hmm. i stuck to principle i wasn't convinced that uh, Uh, what mangwana was asking me to do as the correct thing mm-hmm. he then asked uh, this minister inos chikore to mm-hmm. come mm-hmm. and inos chikore was very angry at me and he said who do you think you are <laughs> and uh, when i saw that he was serious i stood up and put my hands in my pocket mm-hmm. and i said say i think i'm douglas monzo am mm. i wrong and it annoyed him further hey and uh, uh, mangwana then said uh, there's nothing i can do mm-hmm. uh, we may have to part ways and i said yes right away yes i said uh, i just want one favor mm-hmm. you keep the money but i'll take my case oh and i'm gonna win it so i took the case with me mm-hmm. fortunately uh, a mr semwayo was selling his firm in mashingo mm-hmm. i then bought the firm using the money uh, the, the retrenchment money from Mangwana. Uh, Interesting. I was uh, able to do the case mm-hmm. and I'm happy to say I won the case. You won the case? Yes, I won the case. That is why uh, the opposition is getting the political parties fund. Mm-hmm. It emanates from that case. From that case? Yes, it comes oh. from that case. Oh. Uh, so when you see when you when i saw people mm-hmm. fighting with me over the political parties fund mm-hmm. i then said god forgive them for they know not this is my baby i, I fought for this one yes uh, ah, that I was see. in 1987 mm. and i think uh, that was my age that time was 27 27 years yes i had tried to stop the presidential election in 2005 Jeez. Uh, in the constitutional court and i was 25 that time Uh, I I did not succeed uh, <laughs> because I think I was still not experienced mm-hmm. enough. Mm-hmm. Two years later I was to take this case and mm. uh, we succeeded. What a story from uh, Senator Douglas uh, Mwanzoro here on the spot. So we get to find more about uh, uh, Senator Mwanzoro. Like I said earlier, but uh, let's get into this one. You joined the Zimbabwe Congress of Trade Unions ZCTU as a legal advisor and met uh, Tapio Mashagada in 1992. I remember you were uh, you once uh, you know, tweeted this in 2019 saying in a court 
27 years ago, in 1992, in the month of February, I was privileged to receive a letter of um, offer um, of employment as a legal advisor to the Zimbabwe Congress of Trade Unions. It was signed by Morgan Trangirai. What a great, a compassionate boss. Close cut. Can you share your experience, you know, uh, your experiences working with um, at the ZCTU and what that signature meant for uh, to you? What had happened before is that Morgan Shangrai came to do a headhunt mm -hmm. at the University of Zimbabwe, the Faculty of Law. Yeah. Uh, and they wanted a particular type of student. Mm -hmm. um, and they were, I was surprised to be called from the football pitch mm -hmm. uh, by the lecturer, uh, Mr. Makamre, Kempton Makamre at that time. Yeah. And he says, uh, these people want to you to work for the ZCTU. Mm -hmm. uh, I had received an offer from I think it was Standard Chartered Bank, one mm -hmm. of these banks. Yeah. Um, and I went, I went home and thought hard, and I thought it would be fun to <laughs> for the Zimbabwe Congress of Trade Unions. Yeah. Um, and then I accepted, and Morgan Changrai then formally wrote a letter. Mm -hmm. uh, I have laminated that letter because it is a historic letter. Wow, you still uh, have it? Yes, I still have it. Wow. Uh, because that was my very first employment. Mm -hmm. um, I worked with uh, Changrai uh, for, for some time, um, and it was time to get married, mm. and my money was short, and I needed a lot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I approached the secretary general for for a loan. Uh, yes. the money was not, was was short. Yeah, and uh, he extended the loan. Yes, mm -hmm. wow. Um, so we had a very wonderful working relationship. Mm -hmm. And I remember at that time I was able to interact with a lot of people. Mm -hmm. Tapua Mashakada was. The in charge of the economics desk. Yeah. We had a guy called Ricky Garapo. Mm -hmm. uh, there was a Mutangwa guy, Devi Mutangwa. Yeah. These were... Uh, is, is he related to, like, uh, uh, Ambassador Chris Mutangwa? No, no, not 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 Chris. Okay. Uh, I think uh, uh, David, I don't know whether they are related or uh, not. Yeah. Uh, I'm told he's late now. Oh, sir. Uh, and then uh, I was being supervised by Noah Marichera, mm -hmm. a lawyer, and... Um, but uh, also being supervised by Shepard Nzombe, mm -hmm. former law lecturer uh, of mine. Okay. So what surprised me was how Morgan Changrai assembled mm -hmm. this group of professionals. Yeah. And we tried to uh, uh, do our best. That was the time of the Labor Amendment Act. Yeah. And I remember being asked to to do a compendium of the Labor Amendment Act, mm -hmm. and I was able to do that. And that was the document taken to the National Council wow. of the of the ZCTU. Mm -hmm. And for quite some time, we fought with the government over the labor rights. Mm -hmm. So I was privileged uh, to that extent, uh, working with Changrai, and I began to understand him mm -hmm. more. I understood Changrai more than anybody else. Really? Yes, because I had worked with him in three different organizations. Mm -hmm. The first one was the ZCTU. Mm -hmm. The second one was when we formed the National Constitutional Assembly. Okay. Changrai was the chairperson of the NCA. Mm. And Maduku, BT, and myself were in the task force. Okay. And Changrai was chairing us. Mm -hmm. Then when the MDC was formed, mm -hmm. uh, Changrai went to lead the MDC and it left specific instructions to love more Maduka and mm -hmm. myself. Mm -hmm. And and that's why you don't find us in the in the parliament of 2000. Of 2000. Mm -hmm. Changrai then said, you guys remain. You must draft a constitution mm -hmm. that when we win in 2002, we want to administer. Wow. So Maduka and myself started writing the NCA draft. Mm -hmm. uh, well, Maduka is clever, you know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, he wrote uh, seven uh, chapters mm -hmm. and I wrote five chapters wow. of that constitution. Mm -hmm. Um, so Changre was now working there. So I later followed uh, into the parliament and so on mm -hmm. after the NCA. Okay. Yeah, that's quite interesting. You know, but tell us what was the main mandate of the Congress at that time? Sorry? What was the main mandate of, of the con of Congress? The Zimbabwe Congress of Trade Unions. Yes, it sure. Was a, it was the a Federation of Trade Unions. Mm -hmm. Uh, it had a number of trade unions under it, the mine we Associated Mine Workers Union, the General Agriculture and Plantation Workers Union, mm -hmm. Commercial Workers Union. So it was the umbrella board. Mm -hmm. uh, the main task was to defend the rights of the workers. Mm. Uh, and uh, we then were able to interact with quite a lot of people mm -hmm. who became um, 
uh, important people in their countries. I think one a guy became the prime minister of Sweden. Mm-hmm. The other one prime minister of Norway, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. And uh, the other one that we interacted uh, uh, with became the president of South Africa. Wow. Uh, 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 president Cyril Ramaphosa. Oh. We interacted with him when I was at the ZCTU mm-hmm. and he was at Kosatu. Oh, yes. So Kosatu, it, it was more like ZCTU. Yes, it was something like that. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, we were to meet with President Ramaphosa mm-hmm. when I had been appointed to chair, to co-chair COPAC. Mm-hmm. And I went to I went to Shanduka Holdings where he had his headquarters mm-hmm. uh, to ask for wisdom on how to do the constitution yes. seeing that he had done constitution of south africa yeah yeah he's a very very nice man do you do you still interact with the uh, president uh, Cyril Ramaphosa? of course of course we do mm-hmm. uh, and i find him as a source of inspiration yeah i see a lot of similarities mm-hmm. uh, between what i've gone through and yeah. what he went through mm. yes right during your time at zct you you worked with the late uh, justice and so and also the late um, kempton makamure you know, to draft a proposed new constitution for Zimbabwe, which was later rejected, uh, you know, by the government of Zimbabwe. What was it like, you know, uh, being a young lawyer, uh, Wamunzora, you know, trying to bring up uh, about um, such significant change? We were assembled by Margaret Dogo mm-hmm. under a, an organization called Fodesi, Friendly for Democracy in Zimbabwe. Mm-hmm. And the job was to draft to do a draft constitution. Mm-hmm. Um, and I was appointed together with Justice Sansole and uh, uh, Professor Kempton Makamure. Mm-hmm. I was supposed to, uh, supposed to be the secretary for the committee. Oh, yeah. Um, and when we got to the uh, Great Zimbabwe, because we wanted to draft it mm-hmm. at Great Zimbabwe, yeah, uh, symbolically, of course. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, the, Kempton Makamure came with a, what I thought was a funny suggestion. Mm-hmm. And the suggestion was that I do the drafting. You? Yes. And that they do the the, the editing, mm-hmm. uh, the critiquing. Yeah. Uh, so I took pen and paper uh, to start chapter one, mm. chapter two. Yeah. Uh, I think it has it had, uh, about uh, eight chapters. Yeah. It was called the yellow draft. Mm-hmm. Of course, uh, when they looked at it, they revised it mm-hmm. quite extensively. Yeah. But it was something which was quite fulfilling. Mm-hmm. And when we went to present it, uh, we tried to get into Monumtapa building yeah. uh, with our yellow draft. <laughs> and I remember being there <laughs> and uh, feeling the adrenaline. Yeah. Uh, we yeah. were going to see the Mugabe himself get <laughs> him this um, piece of work. Yeah. Uh, we were not even able to see him. Mm. Uh, Why? It was, it, was, it was rejected offhand. Uh, you ca- we were told we couldn't see the president. We were up to mischief uh, and so on. <laughs> <laughs> so when you were told that, well, how did you react? Well, After I, waking, you know, tirelessly, you know. Well, I, I still had hope, you know, mm-hmm. that one day, one day, uh, if we keep on knocking, mm-hmm. uh, we are going to hit the jackpot. Yeah. And, and I was not wrong mm-hmm. because we ended up drafting the constitution of Zimbabwe. Yeah. Yeah, sure, sure. I remember. And uh, you were also one of the founding members, like you said earlier, of uh, National Constitutional Assembly, NCA, in 1997. You know, what was the mandate of the NCA? Now, I, I, I think a lot of people don't know that. Yes, the mandate of the NCA at that, at that point in time was to come up with a people-driven democratic constitution of Zimbabwe, mm-hmm. uh, which had to be homegrown. Yeah. Uh, the Lancaster House, at that point in time, he had suffered, I think, 19 amendments, mm. 18 or to 19 amendments. Yeah. Uh, and it was no longer the constitution that came from Lancaster House. Mm-hmm. So the it was to so we were supposed to advocate yeah. for the coming in of the new constitution. Mm-hmm. But as soon as we started NCA, Mugabe came with the Constitutional Commission, mm-hmm. which was in direct competition with the NCA. Mm-hmm. And this was made up of members of parliament, members of his political bureau, etc. etc. We then opposed the Constitutional Commission mm-hmm. and uh, we went to campaign for a no vote. Mm-hmm. I was specifically given Manikaland to go and uh, campaign in Manikaland. Yes. Uh, tell the people what this constitution was about, which Mugabe was bringing, mm-hmm. and what an ideal constitution would be. Yeah. Uh, and I'm happy to say that uh, Manikaland voted overwhelmingly uh, no for uh, against the 
uh, constitutional commission. What, what strategies did you employ to achieve such a significant you know, outcome? And what does this uh, this experience mean to you uh, in the context of your political career? You know, when you went to campaign for the no vote. We had a guy called Masipula Stole, Professor Masipula Stole, mm -hmm. and we asked him to summarize the constitution mm -hmm. uh, and to come out with 15 points wow. on why what was wrong with the constitution, uh, the, the, the the draft, mm -hmm. the, the the constitutional commission draft. Mm -hmm. Of course, we gave him what was wrong, yeah. but we wanted him to simplify it. Mm -hmm. And it did an extremely wonderful job. Mm -hmm. It was one page of what was wrong. Yes. And we were able to go to the people, uh, speak to them in the language that, that they understand. Yes. And the uh, and we, we agreed. Welshman Nube would go to Matebelele, mm -hmm. speak in Sindebele. Yes. Uh, Mashakada would go to Masingo, mm -hmm. speak in Karanga. Yes. Uh, and other people would go to their provinces. Mm -hmm. I was supposed to go to Manika and, and speak in... Manika. Manika, yeah. And I did that. Mm. And um, I, what I noticed is that the people understood uh, why, where we were coming mm -hmm. from. And uh, we also did have a little bit of resource uh, because a lot of donors were then interested yeah. uh, in, this, in, this, uh, in this thing about mm -hmm. the constitution of Zimbabwe. Mm -hmm. So we succeeded. Wow. Awesome. And, uh, you know, let's move on to this one. Uh, before um, uh, the more widely known NCA uh, draft, Kariba draft, Chijigao Siku draft, and ultimately the COPAC constitution, uh, you were involved in drafting an earlier proposed new constitution in 1994. The draft was created, you know, alongside uh, Ajase uh, Sansole, like you said, and, and uh, Kempton um, Makamure. Can you tell us about the 1994 constitution and the process of drafting it? The Kariba draft, you mean? Yeah. Well, the, Kar the Kariba draft was, um, it was uh, people from parliament. Mm -hmm. uh, I remember Tendai BT was there, Oshman Nube was there, uh, and they 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 sat with um, uh, uh, Chinamasa mm -hmm. and some people from ZANU-PF. Yeah. Um, went to Kariba, uh, they went to Kariba Dam mm -hmm. and sat there and they brainstormed on what a good constitution would be. Mm. Uh, and that's why they came up with the Kariba draft. Okay. But it was rejected by the MDC. Mm, or oh, by the MDC? The MDC, yes. Why? It, because when we looked at the Kariba draft, we saw that it preserved what we wanted to demolish. Mm -hmm. It did not have sufficient uh, 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 safeguards for free, fair, and credible elections. Elections, yeah. Uh, it also did not have sufficient safeguards, mm -hmm. property safeguards mm -hmm. for land. Uh, we were not convinced that uh, land should be taken without compensation. Mm -hmm. We thought that uh, we should follow Section 4 of the African Charter, yeah. which says if you want to expropriate land, you have to do it subject to fair and adequate compensation. Mm -hmm. We also thought that uh, the racial approach was oversimplified okay. because there were people, white people, who had purchased their farms. Oh, yeah. And we needed uh, a little bit of justice mm. there. Oh. Uh, the issue of the courts, you remember in 1994, there was no constitutional court. Mm -hmm. A constitutional court becomes the innovation of the 2013 draft. Oh, yeah. Draft. Yes. So we rejected the Kariba draft uh, outright. Mm. Yeah, I understand. And you were one of the three co chairs of the Constitutional uh, Constitution Parliamentary uh, Committee, uh, which is COPAC, uh, between 2009 and 2013. Uh, how was it, you know, uh, like working with um, Paul Mangwana again <laughs> after, you know, he fired you uh, years back? Well, first of all, I became chairman of COPAC out of accident, pure accident. <laughs> and, uh, how did it happen? What, what had happened is that uh, we had been told that we would be ministers, you know, <laughs> <Yes. Big door. laughs> well yes and, um, <laughs> i remember telling my family about it i'm uh, going to be my, a minister yes and my family started telling other people <laughs> that uh, i was going to be minister unfortunately <laughs> when the announcement was done my mm. name was not there oh uh, and then i was told that uh, i probably will be deputy minister uh -huh. the deputy ministers were announced and the name was not there hey. so and i thought i would be uh, chairperson of portfolio committees within parliament. Uh -huh. The names were announced. I was not, not there. there again. Yes, so I decided to be a backbencher. Um, and uh, after 
the, the, the inclusive government came in February. Mm -hmm. uh, and on the 13th of April, mm -hmm. I then received a call from Morgan Changrai, uh, uh, from from Morgan Changrai's mm -hmm. house that the Prime Minister wanted to see me. Exactly. Uh, that's when I was told that uh, I had been earmarked to be uh, the co-chairperson of COBAC. Mm -hmm. uh, and I, I dug deeper later on how that had come about. Yeah. And I was told that uh, when Mugabe reminded Changrai exactly. that there was a need to establish COPAC, mm -hmm. Changrai said to Innocent Gonese, do we still have a lawyer left? <laughs> and Gonese says, no, there's Monzora. Exactly. So Changrai says, hallelujah, there's Monzora. There. Yeah. So we still have a lawyer uh -huh. for him. That's how I came about. But uh, I then met uh, Honorable Mangwana, mm -hmm. who I had a history mm -hmm. with. with. And uh, the two of us respected one another. Mm -hmm. I, I, I see him as a very intelligent man, very well grounded mm -hmm. when it comes to law. Mm -hmm. um, uh, then there was an old man, uh, Edward Mokosi. He was the stabilizing factor uh, on the, between the two of us. Yeah. Uh, because I was hot blooded, mm -hmm. when I was hot blooded. Yes. And Mokosi would come. <laughs> yes. And he did that very, very well. Yeah. But we had a vision. Uh, me, Mangwana, and Mkosi, that we should produce a new constitution mm -hmm. and that we should succeed. Yeah. And that in order for us, us to succeed, we should appreciate that Zimbabwe is a pluralist country. Mm -hmm. it, is a, it is a country of people with many, with multiple interests. Yeah. And we had to strike a balance mm -hmm. and we should respect even competing interests. Mm -hmm. So we were... I think we had the correct attitude. Mm. So when we started heading COPAC, we agreed that we had to take it out of parliament. Oh, yes. Um, we also agreed that we had to fundraise for COPAC mm -hmm. uh, on our own. Yeah. So that's when we ad uh, we approached UNDP mm -hmm. and COPAC was well funded. The government did come in mm -hmm. through the Minister of Finance, yeah. uh, um, uh, at that time, mm -hmm. and did help uh, COPAC. But we had a lot of uh, problems. For example... During drafting, uh, I was arrested, mm -hmm. uh, and it was because of clause six point four point two. And this what, was, what, what what was he saying? Yeah, this clause six point four point two said that a person is qualified to be president if they are forty years blah 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 blah, mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, provided that you are disqualified if you have run Zimbabwe for a continuous period of ten years. Okay. So effectively, it, uh, it it disqualified Mugabe. Oh. Uh, so when we when we were drafting the constitution, mm -hmm. we wanted to be as far away as possible from, as possible from CIO. Okay. And from the state uh, institution. Yes. Uh, and we decided on where to draft the constitution, mm -hmm. and we said we must draft it uh, at a venue that people least expect. Mm -hmm. And we did the drafting in First Street. First Street? Harare First Street, yes. Where exactly? Well, there, there is, um, you know, where there are the corner First Street and Jason Moyo? Yeah. There is a building which is there. Uh -huh. Yes. Uh, it was Priscilla Mazonga's uh, office. Okay. Uh, so we decided that to be the venue mm -hmm. because that was what people least expected. Oh, yeah. But uh, we also did not want the constitution draft to come out earlier than we wanted. Mm -hmm. Uh, but um, one day we saw it in the Herald. Uh, how did it leak? I don't know uh, how it leaked, but Jonathan was the minister, I think, uh, of... Uh, information? Information, I think, that mm -hmm. time. And uh, there was a full supplement. It was, it was the correct copy. <laughs> but it took them three days to discover clause 6.4.2 hey. because of the convoluted way we had drafted it. Yeah. We yeah. didn't want people to to, 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 to understand it mm -hmm. uh, at first year. Yeah. So after that, uh, uh, Mangwana was in trouble with his Politburo. Mm -hmm. uh, he was accused of being a sellout. Yes. And Mangwana's escape route mm -hmm. was that it is Monzora. Oh, who drafted it. okay. And uh, in order to save Mangwana, I then went to the press and I said, yes, mm -hmm. uh, and we are going to stick by it. Mm -hmm. Um, but didn't you think that it was Mangwana who leaked it? No, no, no. It, it was never him. Okay. It was never him mm -hmm. because of the discussion we had had on that clause. Okay. It was not a clause that uh, we smuggled. In. Okay, yeah. We, we totally, we, we, we fully agreed. Mm -hmm. um, 
So we then, uh, uh, I was I was then surprised one day mm-hmm. when I was in Parliament um, after debating. I heard Zanu PF people saying, "Arukuto rachete nas, arukuto rachete nas." And so you, Ani. I, I didn't even think that it was me. <laughs> so when I went to the car park, uh, three fast young men came. Mm-hmm. Uh, hello, Honorable Monzora. My name is Detective Sergeant Makombe, CID, Law and Order. Hey. We want you. So I was then taken to Senro. Mm-hmm. Um, when I phoned my lawyers that I was in Senro, I was taken to Matapi. Mm-hmm. Uh, again, when my lawyers wanted to uh, visit me in Matapi, mm-hmm. I was then taken to uh, Roseview. Uh-huh. And the following day, I was taken to Nyanga. Nyanga. Yes, and from Nyanga, I was taken to Nyamaropa mm-hmm. uh, Police Station, which is about four kilometers from the Mozambican border. Yeah. For three days, no water, no food. Yo. Yes. Um, so when I was later discovered by my lawyers mm-hmm. and the police came to take me, mm-hmm. um, I had to do a symbolic act to show that uh, what they had done to me did not bother me at all. Mm-hmm. So when I came out of the cells, I did 10 press-ups. 10 press-ups? Yes. So, so you did nothing? Yes. But uh, they were very painful. I should I should. <laughs> Since you're hungry <laughs> <laughs> and thirsty as well. Oh, yeah, that must be something else. But anyways, um, I understand from the way you are narrating your story. So the men who took you from the parliament were not really uh, real policemen? They were policemen from the law and order. So what, 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 what was the reason for, you know, for them to take you, uh, take you from uh, Matapi, Rosview, Nyanga, you know? They did not want me to get legal advice early enough. Okay. Um, uh, and the offense that they accused me of was public violence. Oh. Uh, that I had beaten up uh, eight war veterans mm-hmm. and uh, me together with other people mm-hmm. and so on. It was very, very uh, wishy-washy allegations. Yeah. But I was to do I was to do 27 days in Mutare Rimat prison. Mm. Yeah, and uh, that was quite a lot. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And at that point in time, the constitution making process stalled. Mm-hmm. I I know Mugabe said to Tsangrai, but you have 12 lawyers in parliament. Yes. Uh, why don't you take one of them to head? Yeah. What's so special about about Monzora? Yeah. And uh, Tsangrai said he is my choice. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, after 27 days, we were released. Mm-hmm. But unfortunately, during the 27 days, I went to the court and I had learned that Mugabe had gone for treatment, mm-hmm. eye treatment. Oh, yeah. Um, so when I got to the courtroom, there were a number of CIO people in Nyanga mm-hmm. who were making fun of me. Okay. So I said to one of them, is it true what I hear that this man uh, has gone for treatment? mm mm-hmm. So the CIO guy said, no, ask him. <laughs> yeah. So the magistrate had not yet come. So I went under the portrait of Mugabe uh-huh. and I said, Makadini Baba. Makadi <laughs> 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 um, People laughed in the courtroom, of course. Yeah. But when I got back to prison, mm-hmm. I was in serious problem. Why? Uh, the officer in charge mm-hmm. was very angry at me. Mm-hmm. And I told him that uh, your job here as officer in charge is to make sure that I don't escape yeah. and that I'm safe. Mm. Never to act like uh, an investigating officer. Yeah. Uh, but I was able to come out uh, and uh, resume my, my... So you won the case? Yes, I, event- I won the case when I was already... Um, when I was already out of parliament, mm-hmm. yeah, because they did not keep on prosecuting. Oh, yeah. They started prosecuting me mm-hmm. when I was contesting for secretary general of the MDC. Oh, and oh. that was quite interesting. To me. Mm. And uh, talking of uh, about, about, about Mugabe, uh, you once mentioned, uh, you once described him as, um, as a goblin. Well, it was a song, actually. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, the song was... Uh, uh, it is called Vufue. Zwandaona pano, zwandaona pano wakomana, mugabe chikwambo, mugabe chikwambo wakomana, chikwambo chine manga, manga panende. Ndawana mugabe achigeza, 
Yevo a baby and a sipo a prayer and so on and so forth. Exactly. And the context is Saddam Hussein had just been captured mm -hmm. and he had a long beard. Oh yeah. So that's the, the implication in the song. Oh. That's why um, Gabe and company were very annoyed by mm -hmm. it. Mm -hmm. But when it got to the Supreme Court, my argument was that President Mugabe is not a, in fact a goblin. Mm -hmm. He's a real human being. <laughs> which means that this was a figure of speech. Mm -hmm. And actually, a goblin is some something that creates wealth from nowhere. Mm -hmm. So it was actually a compliment. Okay. Yes, it was actually He was a creating wealth from nowhere. Yes. Uh, without without much economic thought, mm -hmm. the country was running anyway. <laughs> uh, but uh, the Supreme Court, uh, Chijigao Siku then was the judge, mm -hmm. uh, he was the chief justice, mm -hmm. then said, yes, it was a figure of speech. The president is not a goblin. Mm -hmm. uh, so the prosecution was wrong, so I won my case. Oh, again? Yes. Okay. I understand you were also instrumental in the formation of the you know, um, constitution of Gambia. So, can you tell us about it? Yes, um, I was invited as one of the international experts, three international experts, mm -hmm. uh, after the Gambia had uh, ousted mm -hmm. uh, their president. I think his name was Yaya Jame, mm -hmm. and President Barrow had come in. Yeah. Uh, then we were uh, asked to come and help with the review mm -hmm. uh, of the of the Ghana of of the Gambia Constitution as well as. Uh, the um, uh, advising them on a transition mechanisms mm -hmm. and the negotiations. Yeah, uh, and this is wh what I, I had done when I was um, uh, I, when I was in Copac. Mm -hmm. But one of the reasons why I became chairman was that they were attracted by the fact that I had done a constitution under Mugabe. Mm -hmm. So it was it was a nice uh, international experience. We didn't take much time in the Gambia. Yeah, but we did give our own experiences to them oh i see so the movement for democratic change mdc was founded in 1999 by members of um, a broad coalition of uh, civic society group uh, groups and other individuals as well um why was there a need to form another party at that time well it was necessary to form a party that came from labor mostly mm -hmm. um and uh, most of the parties that were there were nationalist in character. Mm -hmm. The Zimbabwe Unity Movement that I had been in, yeah. Zanondonga, UANC, mm -hmm. these were nationalists. Yeah. Now, we wanted a party which, had, which was grounded in the working class. Yeah. Uh, so we then, uh, the ZCTU set, uh, the General Council set, and uh, they decided to form a party. Mm -hmm. uh, and they joined with the Constitution Movement, and by that time, we were already in the constitutional movement mm -hmm. and the student movement. Yeah. So that broad coalition of forces headed by the labor movement mm -hmm. then formed the ZCTU. Okay. By the way, you may want to know that in his book, Voting for Democracy, Jonathan Moy actually predicted that the party that is going to give ZANU PF a run for its money was going to come from labor. Mm -hmm. And we were just doing what he, he had predicted. predicted. Wow, interesting. So, would you consider yourself um, one of the as one of the founding members of the MDC? Of course, of mm -hmm. course, I am. Mm -hmm. And the idea of the MDC was not in 1999 that people talk about. Mm -hmm. It is as old as 1995. Mm. Yes, when Morgan Changrai tried to um, go to the um, Zim rights mm -hmm. uh, after the formation of the Zim rights. Yeah, Zim rights wanted him to. To head the Zim rights so that uh, he will it will uh, uh, morph into a political party, mm -hmm. um, and then it didn't work out, and then there was the formation of the Forum Party. Yeah. The Forum Party was formed in the presence of Mugen Changra mm -hmm. in Sanyat room in Jamison Hotel. Wow. Many people don't know this. Mm -hmm. So I was there when the Forum Party was being formed. Mm -hmm. Coltat was there. Eddie Cross was there. Clive Puzzi was there, Alois Masepe, uh, Masipula Stole was there, and Morgan Changrai was there. Mm -hmm. So, in fact, uh, uh, this MDC was the second party that Morgan Changrai formed. Mm. So, it is actually a lie when people say you were not part of the you know, um, MDC when it was uh, formed. It's, it's, it is a lie mm. because um, as far as 1995, 
Tapua Mashakada, myself, and the youngsters in 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 in, in, in ZCTU, yeah. we are beginning to talk about taking the government head on, mm -hmm. and that we had to form a political party. Yeah. And remember, uh, in 1990, Tendai Biten myself, mm -hmm. in 19, uh, sorry, 1988, mm -hmm. Tendai Biten myself took Changrai to task why he was not forming a workers' party oh. at the University of Zimbabwe. Yeah. And I then worked for the ZCTU. Mm -hmm. And uh, from the ZCTU, I got a lot of jobs that I was doing. Mm -hmm. For example, I was defending people in the MDC. Yeah. We had been arrested. Mm -hmm. I couldn't have done that without being its member. Yeah. And I had been asked by Sangrai to remain outside parliament mm -hmm. so that I would draft the constitution. And the constitution we did draft. Is, is, it, is it what, what you wanted? Or it was maybe because of the... You know what he thought would work yes uh, uh it was also uh when he sold the idea to me mm -hmm. i found that idea attractive okay there was no rush for me to mm. go to parliament i would go to parliament anyway then we are one day i'll go to parliament mm. so in 99 by 1992 we were finished with the draft mm -hmm. unfortunately uh events went the other way yeah and we were not able to implement it mm -hmm. So take us through the growth of MDC from its inception uh, to around uh, 2008, you know, around in my elections by then. Well, um, 2000, uh, the, when, well, 1999 when the MDC was formed, mm -hmm. it decided to yeah. contest the 2000. Mm -hmm. Did very well. Uh, he had, uh, if I'm not mistaken, he had 51 seats. Um, which was very, very good, mm -hmm. uh, almost 50%. Right. And then we go to 2000 and, uh, 2002, the presidential election. Mm -hmm. We believe that Changrai won that election. Mm -hmm. But uh, no sooner had uh, we stabilized after 2002 mm. than there became uh, problems uh, um, uh, started in the, in the, in the MDC. Mm -hmm. uh, people questioning the leadership qualities of Changrai. Mm -hmm. People even questioning his education. Yes. Some people were doing that. Mm -hmm. um, uh, and fortunately, I was not one of them. Yeah. Because I was fascinated at how he had assembled the team. Mm -hmm. uh, 2005, uh, there was a debate on whether we should go for the Senate elections or not. Or not, yeah. And the National Council said, mm -hmm. uh, and so on. And that's where the party split. Uh, Professor Nube and company went their way. Mm -hmm. Morgan Changrai remained. Mm -hmm. uh, 2007, we were part of the new Zimbabwe campaign mm -hmm. when uh, we had the meeting at Machipisa. Morgan Changrai was beaten mm -hmm. and almost left for dead. Yes. One year later, we went for elections, mm -hmm. 2008 elections, uh, and fortunately at that time I was a candidate. Mm -hmm. um, we went for election and gave ZANU PF uh, its heaviest defeat yeah. ever since its formation. Now, uh, Welshman Nube was not there. Yes. Uh, Tendai Biti was not there. Ten Tendai Biti was there. Was there. Welshman Nube was not there. Okay. Tendai Biti left in 2008. Oh, yeah. Uh, after uh, we did not do well in 2013, mm -hmm. uh, BT and Bangoma started saying that they wanted a leadership renewal. Okay. They wanted uh, uh, Changrai to, to, to step aside. Mm. And uh, we went to the side of Changrai. Changrai. Uh, uh, one of the people we were uh, in the same side with was mm -hmm. Chamisa, okay. uh, Mashakada, Pariwa, uh, and, and so on. We mm -hmm. then said, we will stick with Changrai. Yeah. Uh, there is no need for a leadership renewal. Mm -hmm. uh, if we need leadership renewal, we should go to Congress. Exactly. That's why we called for Congress uh, of 2014. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, at the Congress of 2014, mm -hmm. uh, two people who used to be on the same side mm -hmm. started contesting for the same position. <laughs> uh, that is for Secretary General. Exactly. Uh, that is Advocate Chamisa and myself. Mm. That's where it all started. Um, and uh, coincidentally, when we were going for nomination, mm -hmm. um, Advocate Chamisa and Wende and Scala and Amos Chibaya came to me and said they wanted me to be the Secretary General mm -hmm. um, and that they didn't want Apiwa Mashakara to be the Secretary oh, okay. General. Mm -hmm. At first I refused, but they kept on insisting mm -hmm. and accused me of letting them down. Yes. Uh, but um, when I agreed, I mm -hmm. told them that if they changed their mind, mm -hmm. then I would not change my mind. Mm -hmm. uh, unfortunately, as we are going for nomination, uh, Chamisa then said suddenly he wanted to run for 
uh, SG. Oh, yeah. Um, and coincidentally, at that point in time, uh, the prosecution for the case that had happened in 2011 mm -hmm. started in Mutare, in, in Urusape. Mm -hmm. I was brought for prosecution. 24 witnesses were testifying against me. Mm while MDC nominations were taking place. Oh. I didn't interpret that as a coincidence, actually. <laughs> I thought that uh, the coincidence was rather too much. But was it planned? Uh, I don't know, but whoever planned it did not want me to be the Secretary General uh -huh. of MDC. Do you think uh, it's Yamisa? Uh, I, I don't know. I mm -hmm. don't know. Uh, I don't uh, I don't know mm -hmm. uh, whether he had anything to do with it. Yeah. But um, I then got my one nomination mm -hmm. after... after after prosecution, yeah. I got my one nomination. I remember there was an argument between me and Chamisa, mm -hmm. where Chamisa was persuading me yeah. uh, to go for uh, the, the spokespersonship mm -hmm. which I was holding. Yeah. And he says, uh, you, you can't risk, we can't risk losing you mm -hmm. in the leadership. Uh, and I said, no, I am going to get one nomination, mm -hmm. and I am going to beat you by 1,000 votes. <laughs> and uh, I was uh, able to beat him by 859 votes. So I was close. Close to 1,000. Yes. Yeah. But um, after that, uh, mm -hmm. we were not enemies. I went to Tsangrai to say that uh, I think uh, Nelson must come back mm -hmm. uh, into the leadership uh, because he was shocked by the defeat. Yeah. Uh, he must come back into the leadership mm -hmm. and he must be the policy secretary. He was mm -hmm. appointed policy secretary by... by so by the time you... I told you to win a guru secretary general post. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. He, he, was, mm -hmm. he was very, very confident. Mm -hmm. uh, but, um, you know, um, I did not understand why he thought he was going to win. Mm -hmm. Because he had been the organizing secretary mm -hmm. in 2013. Yeah. And people were complaining about his method of candidate selection. Okay. Uh, and uh, a lot of people were very disaffected. Mm -hmm. They were very uh, unhappy with him. Mm -hmm. uh, and I tried to explain to him that... Uh, when, when, when did he join the MDC? I, I'm not very sure about when uh, Nelson joined the MDC, but mm -hmm. I remember that he was a member of Zinasu. Mm -hmm. He was uh, at one point in the Polytechnic uh, a, a, and as a member of Zinasu. Mm -hmm. And uh, he came uh, with um, uh, the late Makuyana, mm -hmm. the late Jambani, uh, and uh, he became a member of the National Youth Assembly mm. uh, and started uh, uh, activities there mm -hmm. uh, as a member of the Youth Assembly. So uh, when, when it comes to the formation of the MD, You were actually part of the leadership then. Chamisa is a legitimate claim. Mm -hmm. you, know, uh, you can't say that uh, he was not there. Well, mm -hmm. when it was actually formed, he was not there. Yeah. But uh, immediately after that, yes. uh, he was there. He joined the party. Yes. Yes. So where, where, where did you get the funding? You know, of the party? Uh, of the MDC? Yes. Well, uh, you know, DJ Ola, those are some of the questions we can't answer because... Um, some of the sources of finance mm -hmm. uh, don't want us to disclose that. <laughs> uh, but we, we did have uh, uh, a lot of sponsorship from mm -hmm. friends uh, outside the country, mm -hmm. uh, from people within the country, mm -hmm. in Zimbabwe. So, uh, so some say um, USA was uh, heavily involved. I don't know. What, what, what's your response that is, to that? That is actually not true. Mm -hmm. uh, I see that uh, there is a lot of... Um, uh, propaganda that we were funded by Britain and America. In America, yeah. Uh, if they funded it all, it was very, very minute. Mm -hmm. The money didn't come from there. Mm -hmm. uh, but of course, uh, moral support, I suppose, was yeah. there. Mm -hmm. uh, Zimbabwe had its own bilateral problem with mm -hmm. Britain mm -hmm. uh, and, and, and America and are around the issue of land, human mm -hmm. rights, and so on and so forth. Yeah. But they were not our major sponsors. Mm -hmm. When you say major, it means somehow if, they were. If they did, that's why I said if they did, it was very, very minimal. Mm -hmm. Yes. And by the way, they have a policy, uh, yeah. especially the Americans and the British. They don't sponsor political parties. Mm -hmm. They can sponsor civic society. Mm -hmm. Not political parties. Not political parties. Uh, what about the agenda? Let's say they want to push a certain agenda in Zimbabwe or in, in a certain country. Uh, do they fund? I, I I have not been privy to that, mm -hmm. unfortunately. Yeah. But uh, I suppose they would fund uh, mm -hmm. if they want to promote an agenda. Mm -hmm. They are funding 
Ukraine right. uh, in its fight with Russia mm-hmm. because they are directly interested. But um, regarding the funding of the MDC, I was to become uh, a Secretary General of the mm-hmm. MDC and I had access to the records. Yeah. And uh, there is nothing that suggests that the British and the Americans funded us. Mm, okay, interesting. So some people say you became famous after the 2008 elections when you were you know, the spokesperson of MDCT. Would you say this was a turning point in your political uh, career, Senator Monzora? Well, I don't know. I don't know whether uh, what came first, um, what, what made people know me was spokespersonship mm-hmm. because what came first was being chairperson of COPAC. Mm-hmm. And as chairperson of COPAC, um, as co-chairperson of COPAC, I was also spokesperson of COPAC. Oh, okay. So we started talking a lot mm-hmm. uh, to the press at that point in time. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think I won uh, my job as spokesperson in the party mm-hmm. partly because uh, people had, had seen me as spokesperson, uh, stroke co-chairperson of COPAC. Of COPAC, yeah. Uh, uh, but yes, of course, uh, being spokesperson, um, I was suddenly thrust into mm-hmm. the into the limelight. Mm-hmm. Uh, those people who did not know me were able to know me. Mm-hmm. Some people were able to listen to my arguments. Yeah. Uh, some were, were, were convinced by them. Mm-hmm. There are some people who were not convinced. Yeah. But um, I think that uh, overall, if I do a balance sheet, yeah. uh, it was a positive um Influence. Around the same time, 2008, you also won your your seat, um, you know, as a, an, an MP, you know. What did you do constituents when you? Yes, I was one of the most effective MPs. Uh, I was able to uh, put electricity in five clinics. Okay. I was able to help build um, uh, two classrooms mm-hmm. in the constituency. Uh, a toilet block in one of the major secondary schools. Mm -hmm. And uh, I was able to assist some people with education. Mm -hmm. So I think I did very well as an an MP. Mm -hmm. Because, of course, the job of an MP is not to do such things. (laughs) Uh, Yes. The job of the MP is to legislate. Mm -hmm. But uh, putting, uh, helping put electricity in Mm -hmm. five clinics, Mm -hmm. I thought that was was, was good. Um, Helping the two primary schools, mm-hmm. I think it was also a good. Yeah. Um, we also helped uh, a, a secondary school. Mm-hmm. It's called Ruangwe Day Secondary School with building material. Yeah. Uh, and I was using the Constituents Development Fund mostly to do that. Mm. Uh, we were able, um, during that period, there was a cholera outbreak mm-hmm. and we were able to mobilize medicines for the people in the constituency to get treatment. Wow. Interesting. And... Um, and let's let, let us talk about uh, the time. You know, I, I always um, that time would hear President Mugabe saying, uh, "You guys, Magano, uh, sanctions. Magati, probably tipo ema sanctions. You, the MDC uh, guys, you know, pushing for the regime change and everything." So tell us about that. Were you part and parcel of uh, you know that uh, issue at and the allegations with Imim? There are two types of sanctions that the Americans brought. Mm -hmm. And there was the sanctions under Zidera, the Zimbabwe Economic and Democracy and Recovery Act. Mm -hmm. And that particular uh, act, it is still there. The sanctions are still there. It actually states why Mm -hmm. they are putting sanctions. And one of the, uh, some of the reasons are Zimbabwe's involvement in the DRC war. Mm -hmm. Uh, and Zimbabwe's human rights uh, record, mm-hmm. uh, especially Zimbabwe's failure to um, to respect uh, property rights, mm-hmm. that had absolutely nothing to do with the MDC. The MDC, yes. Okay. The second uh, type of sanctions are, are what are called the executive orders, mm-hmm. and these executive orders were signed first by George, George W. Bush in mm-hmm. two thousand and one, uh, and then later by Obama, and so on. Mm-hmm. And these executive orders specifically pinned specific human rights offenders, mm-hmm. uh, be they companies or individuals. And I'm yet to, to see a person from ZANU PF mm-hmm. who would say, as yes, at 2001, mm-hmm. 2002, uh, anybody who was interested in human rights would not target them. Mm-hmm. These are sanctions that they brought to themselves. It had nothing to do with the MDC. In fact, uh, in 2012, 
Morgan Changrai went to uh, Australia mm-hmm. and New Zealand and advocated for the removal of sanctions. Mm-hmm. In two, earlier on, in 2008 and, and uh, in 2009, mm-hmm. his very first made speech in parliament, he advocated for the removal of the sanctions. Mm-hmm. And we in the MDC right now, when the special rapporteur of the United Nations came, mm-hmm. we are the only political party that produced a position paper mm-hmm. that the sanctions must go. Must go. Because these sanctions were hitting the common men. Mm-hmm. And we still remain with, uh, grounded on that. Mm-hmm. If there are individuals who ever spoke uh, uh, about sanctions, mm-hmm. it was not a party So why were they blaming you for you know inviting sanctions? It was propaganda. A propaganda, ZANU PF wants to get something to bl- blame. Mm. Remember what they were saying to the people in the rural areas. Uh, you do not have enough food because there are sanctions. Mm-hmm. Uh, you do not have enough this because there are sanctions. Never, it's never because that they've misrun the economy. Mm-hmm. They have to find somebody to blame. So it was just propaganda. Earlier on, you said uh, maybe these guys they gave you uh, the moral support. I mean, Britain and America, you know. Uh, didn't they give you an ear to say, okay, since you guys are saying let's remove the sanctions, then let's let's remove them? Well, they didn't because remember uh, Mandela was removed from the sanctions list. I think after he had uh, served his term as president of mm-hmm. South Africa, mm-hmm. the Americans are very sticky when it comes to removal of sanctions. Mm-hmm. But what I know was um, uh, the impact of Changrai mm-hmm. was uh, uh, this European Union sanctions mm-hmm. because Changrai was able to write a letter directly to President to, to Prime Minister David Cameron mm-hmm. and he dispatched the Jameson Timber to go with the letter. Mm-hmm. I know it because when the letter was drafted, I was there. Yeah. And he did contribute to it. Mm-hmm. And the letter was saying that uh, the, the European Union sanctions must be removed. Mm-hmm. Um, I remember uh, Prime Minister Cameron saying that the European Union was going to remove sanctions except for uh, three people. Mm-hmm. And that was Robert Mugabe, Grace Mugabe, and uh, the Zimbabwe Defense Industries mm-hmm. as a company. Mm. Uh, the generals, including General Chiwenga, were going to be put on the suspended list. Mm-hmm. So there was a positive uh, 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 impact by Changrai mm-hmm. to, re- to have the sanctions removed. So why, uh, why, why the three remaining? Well, because David Cameron said that it is an election issue in Britain, mm-hmm. that we are removing Mugabe from, from sanctions is too much for me. Yeah. That's what he said. Mm-hmm. And I, I believe that that was an honest answer. Mm-hmm. Uh, so they were, they were specific on Mugabe. Oh, I see. So tell us about your role in the negotiations between ZANU-PF and MDCT, uh, you know, mediated by uh, Thabo uh, after the controversial 2008 elections. You know, what kind of talks, you know, happen in such scenarios? Well, um, the time I joined, um, I was not the major negotiator, but I was one of the negotiators. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, I, I mostly, mostly got involved on the outstanding issues. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I would go either with Tendai Miti or with Mangoma, depending on who of them was absent. Mm-hmm. And uh, these negotiations centered uh, around the interpretation of the uh, GNU, mm-hmm. uh, we had realized as the MDC that we had also made a mistake mm-hmm. in the negotiations. Mm-hmm. Uh, maybe because we were inexperienced. We thought that as long as we agreed on sharing the minister, mm-hmm. the ministers, yeah. then we were controlling the ministry. That's not correct. Mm. Uh, the ministry is not controlled by the ministers. It is controlled by the bureaucracy, mm-hmm. the permanent secretaries, the directors, and so on. Mm-hmm. There, the MDC was not was not represented. Oh. <coughs> and that was a big mistake. A mistake on mm-hmm. our part. Yeah. Uh, that is why some of our ministers ended up reading wrong speeches. <laughs> you know, uh, Fidelis Mashu and uh, I think uh, uh, the let just should say why did the same. Right? Why? Because what happened? These speeches were prepared by the bureaucracy. Oh, yeah. And they were prepared with the narrative, the Zanu PF narrative. It was quite embarrassing, you know. <laughs> um, so uh, we also had other outstanding issues like the issue of the governors. Uh-huh. And we wanted uh, to share the governors. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's when we were involved. Mm-hmm. And uh, the team that President Mbeki and later President Zuma brought in 
um, involved uh, included Charles Makula, mm-hmm. uh, Mark Maharaji, uh, a very very clever man, mm-hmm. um, and uh, Lindy Wezulu. Uh, again, this was a, a gifted team. Yeah. yeah. Um, and we negotiated quite a- extensively, including on the constitution. Mm-hmm. We were able to go close by close with the constitution. Yeah. Go to the outstanding issues of the constitution. And if time allows me, uh, DJ Ola, mm-hmm. I'll also tell you how the constitutional court came to be. Mm. Um, and it, because it was one of the outstanding issues. Yeah. Um, and Justice Jao Siku and the Supreme Court judges then mm-hmm. did not want the constitutional court because they thought that it would be superior to the to the to the to the Supreme Court. Mm-hmm. So they summoned us for lunch, Honorable Mangwana and myself. Mm-hmm. And they started speaking against the constitutional court idea. Um, and I remember not taking part in the in the discussions. Mm-hmm. Um, so after lunch, uh, after the lunch, just Makarao then said, but Honorable uh, Monzora has not said anything. Mm-hmm. I was then given the vote of thanks. Yeah. Um, and I decided to say one sentence mm-hmm. or two. Uh, thank you for the lunch. There shall be a constitutional court in Zimbabwe. Mm. Um, Justice Makarao thought I had been rude. Yeah. Because she followed me. Mm-hmm. Uh, and said, Douglas, what was that for? Mm. What was that for? Yeah. And I said, you are judges. Your job is to interpret the law. Mm-hmm. We are the legislators. Our job is to make the law. Mm-hmm. Now you want to tell us how to make the law. You were offside. You were not running in your land. How did she react to that? Well, she said, you are correct, but there are other ways to express yourself. Oh. <laughs> and I said, uh, but just smack around, there shall be a constitutional court. Yeah. Uh, you know that. Uh, and in 2018? There is a constitutional court. In Zimbabwe. Wow. Yes. Yeah. So how did you feel on a personal level, you know, when Morgan Trang Rhyme decided to and uh, not not to contest uh, the rerun uh, elections in 2008 did you think you know he gave up too soon yes i think so because i was one of the people uh, who said that we should take it to the wire we should take zanu pf to the wire mm-hmm. uh, i remember saying this in the in the st- in the standing committee mm-hmm. uh, and we had the lawyers uh, i think uh, uh, innocent chagonda was one of the lawyers yeah. who, who came to advise us and the lawyers were of the opinion that we should not uh, uh, go to court. Yeah. Uh, I didn't share that mm-hmm. uh, with them. And I think quite a number of people did not share that with them. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think he gave, uh, he gave in too soon. Uh, by the way, there was no alternative solution. Mm-hmm. Um, if there had been an alternative solution, then we would have said, well, uh, there is a, what do they call it? The partner. Uh, yeah. Yeah, but uh, it wasn't there. And I, I think... Uh, wrong but also the mdc had started uh uh, uh splitting mm-hmm. uh, but it could be splitting up time do you think we're gonna win the, the election never gonna rerun well i think so i think i think i think Changre could have won the election mm-hmm. but uh, remember this was the time of Nikov. Yeah. Um, and this Nikov has a big history, you know. Was it a real thing? Yes, Nikov existed mm-hmm. and existed in many names, mm-hmm. right? And uh, legend has it that uh, it also helped uh, some senior MDC people uh-huh. with the development projects. Okay. Uh, whether they knew it was Nikov or uh-huh. not, I don't know. Yeah, how? They, they got assistance from it. Uh, infrastructure, uh, build infrastructure. <laughs> yeah. I, won't ma- I won't name names here. Okay. But they did build infrastructure for mm. some of our uh, our senior people within the MDC. Wow. We discovered it too late, Ooh. and probably they discovered too late that it was Nikov. So, so, so it's true when we hear the rumors that uh, you know some of the MDC people or whatever the all or opposition uh, guys work hand in hand with the ruling party. It's true. Well, I, I. I, I, I can say that uh, for some it is true mm-hmm. uh, and there has been direct evidence mm-hmm. that I have uh, come into contact with yeah. and how I came into contact with that evidence is that uh, um, the setup of the MDC mm-hmm. then under Changrai was that uh, there was an, an intelligence wing mm-hmm. uh, who would report to the president. Exactly. And when the president was too ill, mm-hmm. I became the recipient of, yeah. those, of those reports. reports. Yes, and uh, I saw names that um, 
if I were to tell you if I could. Yeah, you, you, please. No, I can't tell you. <laughs> it's not fair for you. Okay. Um, uh, if I was to tell you, you wouldn't believe. Mm -hmm. But uh, I'm not surprised at what they eventually did. Yeah. Uh, because it seems like they were playing according to script. So yes, you have people. Who so are you still working with those uh, who worked with the ZANPF? Are you still working together with them? Some of them. Yeah. Uh, well, very few are mm -hmm. still with me. Mm -hmm. uh, and one of the reasons is that I knew mm -hmm. about them. Yeah. And they knew that I knew. Mm. Uh, and it was too much for them. Mm -hmm. uh, they believed that at one point in time I was going to say it mm -hmm. uh, and so on. But uh, one of the things you do in that position of responsibility is to be very responsible mm. with information. Yes, there are people within the opposition that are working with ZANU PF mm -hmm. right now. Uh, As we speak. All, all you can see, all you can see is to look at the circumstantial evidence. Mm -hmm. You don't even need the direct evidence. All right. Circumstantial evidence, mm -hmm. actions by certain people mm -hmm. tell you that they are for the benefit of ZANU PF. Right. And that they are they are they are they are advancing the ZANU PF agenda. Mm -hmm. uh, that's why you hear people say, let's form another political party. Mm -hmm. Let's and you continue forming political parties ad infinitum. Mm -hmm. That is a territorial size of people right. who are working for the regime. Yes, they are there. And some of them uh, work for the regime not out of choice, mm -hmm. but because the regime will have compromise on them. Mm. It will have information of all oh, of them. Yeah. So they will come to you and say, oh, by the way, there is this information. Mm -hmm. About uh, you? About you. And uh, maybe there are videos, mm -hmm. whatever. <laughs> uh, we know you did this. And then you get people terribly scared yeah. of uh, exposure. Mm -hmm. Yes. This uh, system is a very extortious system. Mm -hmm. I'm very happy to say that I have not been uh, uh, a victim of that because I did not have any, co any compromise at all. Yeah. That's why when people uh, accuse me of being a ZANU PF mm -hmm. or helping ZANU PF, yeah. I offered uh, uh, to one person, I offered 10,000 United States dollars mm -hmm. uh, should he come with proof you come and pick his money. Mm -hmm. uh, to someone, I offered 100,000 United States <laughs> dollars that if you have that proof, uh -huh. please come and, and, and share it with the public. So you did not work you know, with ZANU PF at any point? Absolutely not. And when I was a leader of the opposition, mm -hmm. uh, there were two instances where I shared a podium mm -hmm. with President Mnangagwa. Mm -hmm. And that is number one, when we were fighting COVID. Mm -hmm. Because I believed that uh, COVID was uh, a, a national disaster mm -hmm. uh, which had to be completely depoliticized. Yeah. And I had to lead mm -hmm. the depoliticization. That is why I, I also had received advice um, from very people very close to me mm -hmm. on whether I should be vaccinated or not. Okay. And one of them was Bertha mm -hmm. uh, and the mother. Yes. All these people are medically trained. <laughs> yes. And they said, no, there's nothing to think about. Mm -hmm. Go and get vaccinated. So with that confidence, yeah. I went and got vaccinated publicly. Mm -hmm. And when President Mnangagwa said, let's go and promote the vaccination program mm -hmm. in Victoria Falls, I did not have to think much about it. Yeah, we saw it. you on the plane. Yes. Yeah. I went there. Mm -hmm. um, I, was, I was given a speech uh, and I, I made my speech. Mm -hmm. And I'm very happy to say that uh, if you look at, uh, comparatively speaking, the fight of Zimbabwe against COVID mm -hmm. was exemplary mm -hmm. uh, in, the, in the region. And we had made, I had uh, addressed a press conference mm -hmm. where I made certain demands on what the government should do, mm -hmm. that it should provide vaccinations free of charge, yeah. and that um, when it comes to fatalities, it had to, uh, to, to help the families, mm -hmm. uh, etc., etc. Yeah. And the government did listen to that. Uh, and the second, of course, was the uh, barrier of some of the national heroes, mm -hmm. of course, um, that we, we, objectively speaking, yeah. we are national heroes. Mm. So the philosophy that we had is that we should not donate Independence Day to mm -hmm. ZANU-PF. Mm -hmm. We should not donate um, Heroes Day to ZANU-PF mm -hmm. because uh, this is not their day. It is a national day. But, uh, but some of these events, you don't, uh, you don't attend. Why? 
Opos, well, opposition parties, uh, I mean, we don't see you there. Well, the the MDC uh, uh, does attend uh, uh, most of the national events. Mm -hmm. um, we, we have a, a, a national council resolution mm -hmm. to say these national events are not for the ruling party. Mm -hmm. uh, and if something is for the national benefit, we go and support it. That is why you saw uh, I was uh, at the SADC summit mm -hmm. um, because Zimbabwe was getting its rotational championship. Mm -hmm. uh, so whether I have uh, differences with President Munangagwa uh, and so on doesn't matter. Here is a national interest. Mm. I saw people uh, uh, who were dissing those athletes, yes. I think Charamba and Makarao, yeah, true. those youngsters had done well. Mm -hmm. They were in the final for God's sake. Yes. And all we needed to do as Zimbabweans was to put aside our differences. And support After them. All, I don't even know whether those public, uh, youngsters support mm -hmm. any political part or not. Mm -hmm. But here were Zimbabweans who had done something objectively mm -hmm. good. Yeah. And we had to support them. Mm -hmm. And you saw Zimbabweans... Uh, uh, castigating them and so on, discouraging mm. them. That was very wrong. But uh, like I, I'm coming back to this same thing. We see you at very few, you know, uh, events. But there's Independence Day, there's Heroes Day, there's whatever National Defense Force Day um, and other, you know, but we don't see you there. Is there a particular reason uh, why you don't show up there? Or maybe you say, I don't know, this is not our thing. Or you you, you, you choose, you're picky when you say, okay, uh, this one I'll go. No, this one, no. Yeah, sometimes uh, there is objectionability when it comes to the choice of national heroes. Mm -hmm. um, and there you may not see us mm -hmm. uh, on the barrier of the national heroes. We won't say it because mm -hmm. we don't want to offend the families yeah. and so on. They are grieving mm -hmm. at that point in time. Um, but also, uh, ZANU PF has tended mm -hmm. to convert these national days mm -hmm. into party days. Slogans are said, people are castigated, and especially during the time of President Mugabe, mm -hmm. uh, you would take opportunity to castigate the MDC. Mm -hmm. um, calling us sellouts, etc, etc. So, would rather not be there. Is it not because you won't be there? I'm sure if you were there, you won't say. Well, you didn't well, have said I'm something. I'm not so sure whether President Mugabe would not, would not have said that. Mm. Uh, I, I doubt that very much. <laughs> uh, <DJ Ola>. But <laughs> the point is, the position mm -hmm. of the MDC yeah. is that the national days don't belong to a political party. Mm -hmm. And that uh, Zimbabwe must respect these national days. Mm -hmm. um, remember, when we go to the Heroes Day, for example, mm -hmm. we are we are celebrating the lives of Buyane Handa, yes. Gaguvi, mm -hmm. uh, Sekuru Tangwe, Nachitepo, mm -hmm. etc. Et yeah. Some people would not make it into independence yeah. and would have done no offense mm -hmm. uh, to the independent Zimbabwe. Yeah. And uh, we should honor them uh, and their sacrifices where such that they should be honored. Mm -hmm. Look at what they do uh, in the West. Mm -hmm. They celebrate D-Day at Normandy when the Allies landed at Normandy. Yeah. They go there. Mm -hmm. And uh, Rishi Sunak went there mm -hmm. and uh, cut his visit short, yes. saying that he wanted to go to Britain to mm -hmm. attend a debate. Mm. It probably cost him prime ministership. Wow. Yes, it's arguable, but mm -hmm. it probably cost him. Yeah. Because the, the British then said, why don't you own our heroes? Yeah, true. We must own our heroes. Mm -hmm. We must own our independence. And but my plea to Zanu PF is that it must depoliticize mm -hmm. these national events. True. So you were part of. Let, let me take you back to the GNU. Uh, you were part of the formation of the GNU. Um, looking back, was the GNU the right solution for the Zimbabwe? You know, at that time, without doubt, it was the best thing that is Zimbabwe at that point in time. Mm -hmm. And uh, at that point in time, the MDC decided to get into the GNU mm -hmm. for three things. Yeah. Number one, it was to stop the bloodletting mm -hmm. that was happening. Remember, the MDC had lost 300 uh, of its finest youngsters yes. uh, to, that, to, the, to the killings. Mm -hmm. Number two, it was to sort out the economy. Mm -hmm. Number three, it was to have a people-driven democratic constitution. Mm -hmm. Those were the three reasons why we ended. And you achieved those three? Yes, we achieved those three. The economy uh, was better, mm -hmm. uh, relatively speaking. Mm -hmm. We stopped the bloodletting mm -hmm. and we also had a democratic constitution. Mm. So we don't regret uh, going 
into the GNU. Mm -hmm. The best alternative uh, the, 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 was was going to be what? Mm -hmm. It was going to leave the, let the bloodletting continue. Yeah. Let the people get eventually angry enough uh, to take arms. Spiro Zimbabwean blood feather. It was not a best alternative for us. Mm. So, do you think uh, Zim needs another GNU, and would you like to be part of it? Well, what we think as the MDC is that dialogue is very important for Zimbabwe, mm -hmm. and the dialogue has tended to work for Zimbabwe. Mm -hmm. um, the Lancaster House came as a result of dialogue, independence. Mm -hmm. Yes, they were fighting, but they eventually we went to the to the to the to the to the dialogue table. Yeah, uh, the bloodletting in Matebele land was ended by dialogue between PF Zapu and Zanu. Mm -hmm. And the bloodletting in 2008 was ended with the dialogue between MDC formations and Zanu PF. Mm -hmm. Overall, Zimbabweans benefited. So dialogue is very, very important. Mm -hmm. What dialogue then produces, uh, which you are talking about, the GNU is an end product of dialogue. Dialogue, yeah. What must come first is dialogue itself. Mm -hmm. And that's where we end as the MDC. Mm -hmm. That Zimbabweans must talk to one another. Mm -hmm. That the political conversation in Zimbabwe is a typical conversation of the deaf. Mm -hmm. Nobody's listening <laughs> to one another. Yeah. You know, people are busy being as unpleasant to each other mm -hmm. as possible. There is nothing very wrong with being ZANU-PF. Mm -hmm. Neither is anything... Uh, very wrong about tri being triple C. Mm -hmm. Neither is anything being uh, 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 is very right about mm -hmm. being MDC. Mm -hmm. Also, there is nothing very right about Zan being ZANU PF. Mm -hmm. There is nothing very right about being triple C or Blue Movement. There mm -hmm. is nothing very right about being the uh, MDC. Mm -hmm. It's a question of individual choice. Yeah. And when people are leaders in those organizations, mm -hmm. they must exercise responsibility. And the responsibility comes to realize with the realization mm -hmm. that Zimbabwe has more people than MDC. Okay. That there are people who genuinely love their Zanu PF. Mm -hmm. There are people who genuinely love their Chamisa. Mm -hmm. There are people who genuinely love their Douglas. True. And those people have to be respected. Mm -hmm. We shouldn't force match them into uh, liking what we like. Mm -hmm. That's wrong. So that's the dialogue, dialogue. you want. So after the GNU ended in 2013, there was some, you know, uh, chaos in your party. Uh, you were part of a, a group of six members, including Morgan Sangirai, who were suspended from the MDC. Uh, what was the political at atmosphere like within the party at the time? There was a group uh, led by Tedai mm -hmm. and and, and uh, Mangoma uh, that thought that uh, they wanted uh, uh, Sangirai to leave. Mm -hmm. But they wanted Sangrai to live outside the democratic process. Mm -hmm. They did not want Sangrai to take part in the Congress. Okay. Uh, myself, Chamisa, uh, Mashakada, and company, our argument was that let's go to the extraordinary Congress. Mm -hmm. And those who want to contest, let them contest. Yeah. Uh, and so on, including Sangrai himself. Mm -hmm. uh, Tendai BT didn't think that that was that was uh, correct mm -hmm. because they feared losing to Tsangrai. Okay. And for me, that was undemocratic. Mm -hmm. uh, the atmosphere was tense and it was clear that there was a third hand mm. that was there. Which hand now? Uh, well, there is circumstantial evidence. There was circumstantial evidence to us that ZANU-PF was involved. Mm -hmm. Yes. Just like ZANU-PF was involved mm -hmm. uh, in this MDC split of 2018. Mm -hmm. uh, MDC didn't split in 20 in 2020. Right. Uh, where you then saw those recalls. Yeah. The MDC split in 2018. Zanu PF took part in the succession issues mm -hmm. within the MDC. And right. That was wrong. How so? Sorry. How did they take part? How did they take part? Mm. Uh, you know, at um, at uh, Changres funeral, the the state security was there in full force. Mm -hmm. And some people were beaten. Uh, I was almost bent in the heart mm -hmm. together with Tokozani Kupe. Yeah. No single arrest. So the government was ZANU PF. Mm -hmm. Why didn't it arrest anyone? Did you report? With, with, that, with that offense. Did you uh, report to the police? They were there. Mm -hmm. They were there. But you didn't report? Sorry? But you didn't report? No, no, no. 
because they were there. What, <laughs> why do I report something to a policeman who is present when I'm being attacked? <laughs> and some of them, some of the police officers actually escorted me <laughs> to the hut. And the attempted murder was done in their presence. <laughs> and they did nothing. And so you suspect that um, ZANPF was involved? I know it was. Mm. In 2018 elections, you ran for the MP position in Nyanga North, which you had previously won in 2008, but lost to Yubeta Nyanongo of ZANU PF. Uh, you contested uh, the vote, but uh, you know uh, couldn't provide evidence that it had been manipulated. Um, what happened? I provided evidence. Whether the courts liked the evidence or not is another issue. Mm -hmm. uh, my case was not thrown out because I did not provide any evidence. Mm -hmm. Uh, what they said was that uh, the evidence was inconclusive. Yeah. Um, but, uh, you know, there were people who came from Mozambique to vote. Mm -hmm. I knew that because of my involvement in COPAC, yeah. I would be a genuine target mm -hmm. uh, of Nikov. I would be a genuine target of the military. Mm. At that point in time, what Zimbabweans didn't notice was the involvement, uh, more intricate involvement of the of the of the military in um in the in the civilian affairs mm -hmm. and especially in elections. Yeah. But uh, I, I I tried to fight my case. Mm -hmm. uh, I did not succeed, uh, and uh, life went on. The mm -hmm. following the following election time, mm -hmm. I was in the Senate. Yeah. And uh, after the death of um, Morgan Tsangirai, uh, MDCT elected Nelson Chamisa as acting president of the party. Uh, you criticized the move, uh, saying that the party violated, uh, violated its, its constitution. According to the MDC constitution, what should have happened? The MDC never elected Nelson Chamisa at any point in time. Mm -hmm. Who elected him? And, and, and uh, uh, I would challenge minutes to be produced. Mm -hmm. Who appointed what him then? What happened is that President Changrai had appointed two vice presidents, additional mm -hmm. Yeah. Vice president, mm -hmm. uh, in the form of uh, engineer Mzuri and advocate Chamisa. Mm -hmm. And when President uh, Changrai was uh, away, mm -hmm. there was a fight between Mzuri, Kupe, and Chamisa on who was the acting president. Mm -hmm. And that's when you saw those fake tweets by Luke Tamborenyoka and the company yeah. reporting to be Changrai, mm -hmm. when Changrai could hardly move his fingers, mm -hmm. um, uh, endorsing, uh, purporting to endorse. Uh, advocate Chamisa. Yeah. So uh, he came as a result of that default position mm -hmm. that uh, there they were three vice presidents. Yes. One of them had to be the acting president. The, yes, true. And he said it was him. Mm -hmm. um, I criticized that move mm -hmm. because I had previously taken them, the three of them, mm -hmm. the three vice presidents, yeah. through the constitution mm -hmm. that we should have an acting president mm -hmm. and the acting president will be the president, acting president elected at Congress. Uh -huh. We had only one person, yeah. and that was Tokozani. Mm -hmm. And then we will go for an extraordinary Congress mm -hmm. where Chamisa, Muzuri, and whoever wanted could contest mm -hmm. for the president. Yeah. That's what the constitution of the MDC provided. Yeah. And uh, uh, we were not listened to. Uh, we were subjected to attempts on our lives mm -hmm. and so on. Mm -hmm. So there was no election. Um, and then after that, because an election in the MDC constitution mm -hmm. is election by Congress, yeah. extraordinary Congress, mm -hmm. it was never conducted. Mm -hmm. um, the only other election that they, that that that, that is supposed sub, was supposed to have taken place was 2019. Mm -hmm. We now know that it was nullified by the by the Supreme Court. By yeah, that type of election. But Iba Baba Baba, Iba one place that now Tanga before Tangre Achitorum Penye. Well, the, 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 yes, there was, uh, there was uh, a lot of problems, especially regarding Vice President Kupe. Yeah. Uh, because it's not fair, if you look at it, that somebody is elected at Congress. Mm -hmm. uh, and then on, uh, beside that person, you appoint other people. Mm -hmm. um, and what made it look ugly was that these people were male mm -hmm. and these people were Shona. Mm. And Togozani Kupe was from Matebelele. Yes. Then the interpretation would be, you don't want a woman to succeed, mm. number one. Yeah. You don't want somebody from Matebelele mm -hmm. to succeed. So it was ugly to me. Uh, and that is why I wanted us to go for the for the constitutional position. Oh, yeah. Uh, in all probability, Chamisa could have won mm -hmm. that. 
and I don't know why he went for the shortcut. Mm -hmm. uh, and I told him that uh, th we have problems um, later, later in the life of the party mm -hmm. and the problems we had. Yeah. Somebody conscientious took us to the Supreme Court. Sorry, took us to court. Yeah. Beat us in the high court. Mm -hmm. And then Advocate Chamisa made the unwise decision mm -hmm. of taking the matter to the Supreme Court. Oh, yeah. And he lost in the Supreme Court. Mm -hmm. It's not as if Chamisa was taken to the Supreme Court. Mm -hmm. Chamisa went to the Supreme Court and was beaten by Mashavira in the Supreme Court. So he was not supposed to go to the, Supre to the Supreme Court? No, because what I said to Advocate Chamisa mm -hmm. was that uh, uh, when the judgment came, mm -hmm. uh, I think it was just Mshore in, uh, I think it was in April, mm -hmm. we were supposed to go to the ordinary Congress in May. Right. So I said to Advocate Chamisa, mm -hmm. let's convert the ordinary Congress into an, an extraordinary one. Mm -hmm. Then we are within the Constitution. Yes. And then there is no need of us subjecting this judgment to another interpretation. Mm -hmm. Because I have I had read the judgment and the judgment was 100% correct. Mm -hmm. And one of the things I had done as, as Secretary General mm -hmm. was to seek the advice of uh, the, 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 the opinion mm -hmm. of an advocate, yeah. Advocate Martinenga. Mm -hmm. He had reduced his opinion in writing and the opinion was that go for extraordinary Congress. Mm -hmm. So Advocate Chamisa should not have gone uh, to the Supreme Court. To, gone to the, to the, Constitu to the Supreme Court. Mm -hmm. Because then when he go to the Supreme Court, the Supreme Court made a definitive pronouncement that he was not the president. Mm. Yes. Yes. Yeah, that's a tricky one. Um, at least we are learning new things <laughs> from what you are saying. So I understand that uh, there were reports, you know, uh, that you, you were attacked by the party youths. You know, uh, what was the reason for the attacks? Well, I don't know. I don't know why I was being subjected to attacks, not only by party youths. Mm -hmm. um, every national standing committee, mm -hmm. I would be sub subject of ridicule. Yeah. Uh, every national executive. Um, and every national council was mm. held yeah. to such an extent that uh, when I saw that this was too much, mm -hmm. I would take uh, a few shots of whiskey mm. uh, and go there and sit in front of them yeah. while they attacked me. Yes, you know because it was just just uh, too much and there was no protection. Was this an indication of internal politics forces, uh, political forces, trying to eliminate you from the party? There was, there was no question about it, mm -hmm. and it became now. A question of uh, who moves in first. Mm -hmm. You know, it was a question of time. Yeah. And you may want to know, DJ, that uh, I was not the first to recall people from Parliament. Mm -hmm. I was the first to be recalled from Parliament. Yeah. So what what uh, uh, Advocate Chamisa's administration did is that they actually wrote to Parliament mm -hmm. to recall me, Muzuri, and Komich. Okay. Uh, from Parliament. Why? Uh, well, they said that. Uh, we were arranging a rebellion against uh, uh, Advocate Chamisa mm -hmm. and so on. Okay. Uh, we were also supporting uh, the reasoning of the Supreme Court. Mm -hmm. uh, and the, the, the parliament at that point in time had in its possession mm -hmm. the Supreme Court judgment. Okay. And then they said, you can't record them because you are You're not, not the president. You are not in authority. Mm. Yeah. So after the 2018 election, the three member parties, you know, of the original MDC, MDCT, MDCN, and the PDP reunited uh, to form the MDC Alliance. However, the court ruled that MDCA or MDC Alliance is a party and you took over the MDCT leadership. Mayoma Garamchida raw or you just, you know, saw an opportunity no, no, uh, and imposed yourself there. The, the, the narrative is slightly incorrect. Yeah. The MDC Alliance was formed in 2017, mm -hmm. um, and it was made up of uh, seven political parties, right. including the former MDC people. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, we went to election as the MDC Alliance, mm -hmm. but there was an election pact, an agreement. Yeah, that we in the MDCT mm -hmm. were going to choose our own MPs, okay, our own councillors, mm -hmm. and PDP the same. Ours, the majority of our people won. Mm -hmm. They were under the MDCT. They okay. Were MDCT. Mm -hmm. Now, when we went to Congress in 2019, mm -hmm. Welshman Nube dissolved his MDC 
and he fo- and, and he joined the MDCT. Okay. Uh, Tendai BT did the same mm-hmm. and joined the MDCT. So there was no PDP anymore. No, absolutely not. Mm-hmm. And that is why there is a resolution which says we have welcomed them home. Mm-hmm. Uh, we couldn't have welcomed the them home in the alliance yes. because they were founder members of mm-hmm. the alliance anyway. Yes. We welcomed them home because they were now in the MDCT. Mm-hmm. Now, when the Supreme Court made its ruling, it affected the MDCT, mm-hmm. which was the major shareholder in the alliance. Yeah. And of course, people made choices. Some said, we don't listen to the Supreme Court. Mm-hmm. We go it alone and we remain. Mm-hmm. That's how uh, it, 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 it happened. People started calling you a sellout, you know. Uh, did you sell out uh, the party? Well, first of all, I did not grab power during a funeral. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, I never advised Honorable Chamisa to do that. Mm-hmm. I did not go to court. Um, Mashawira went to court, and the later advocate Chamisa himself mm-hmm. went to court. Mm-hmm. And when the court made its ruling, it was uh, the final ruling mm-hmm. by the court. Yeah. Uh, you couldn't ignore it. Mm-hmm. Uh, and as a lawyer, I couldn't ignore it. Yeah. And uh, I went with uh, the ruling of the court mm-hmm. um, and uh, wanted to preserve constitutionalism. Yes, I could have uh, just done the uh, populist thing, mm-hmm. to say it doesn't matter. Yeah. But I'm not that type of person. Mm-hmm. I, I think that it is important to follow the constitution because, you know what, constitutions are built out of the distrust of politicians. Mm-hmm. Uh, Today somebody is good. Tomorrow somebody is it's, completely yeah, changed. Change, yeah. Yes. So um, and we were then involved, and I regret this, uh, mm-hmm. uh, DJ Ole. Yeah. We were involved in a political fight. Oh yeah. Now when you are in a political fight, you don't say Mukoma Dagimaro was not what's money. It's a fight. Yes, true. And uh, they were fighting me. I was fighting back. Mm-hmm. Um, and by the way, we fought for the Harvest House. Yes. Right? Yes. And. Uh, the Harvest House, contrary to the propaganda, mm-hmm. was taken by three youngsters. Mm. Tendai Micheka Hanzo, uh, Bernard Arufiche, uh, and uh, with the with the cooptation of Dangan Matziwa. Mm. These are youngsters who are still there. Yeah. But of course, we were able to trick our, uh, the people there. Yeah. Uh, and we occupied the Harvest mm-hmm. House. They came uh, at a later stage, wanted to occupy the Harvest House, mm-hmm. started... Uh, Beating the doors yeah. with um, with the iron bars, we called the police to say there is an offense being committed. Mm. Uh, some people are, are breaking a uh, uh, property, you know? <laughs> so we never sold out uh-huh. uh, at any. That's why I always say mm. that the problem with Zimbabwean politics is that if you disagree with someone, yeah, then you are supposed to be a sellout. Mm-hmm. And I'm very happy that poetic justice is being done. Jedi mm-hmm. BT was calling me a sellout. Mm-hmm. Welshman Mube was calling me a sellout. Mm. Opo Chingono was calling me a sellout because I was not on their side. Okay. Now, they have had disagreements mm-hmm. with Advocate Chamisa and they have inherited that name from me now. Mm-hmm. I'm less as of a, a sellout than them. <laughs> this is a weapon of choice by political leaders in the opposition mm-hmm. that uh, if somebody disagrees with you, you just label them. But uh, I said, and I offered a prize. Mm-hmm. Those who have the who have uh, uh, the evidence, please bring it on. Mm. And I still offer the challenge. Those who have that evidence yeah. that I worked for Zanu PF, mm-hmm. please bring it, and there is a prize for you. <laughs> There's still a prize for you, guys. Got a million evidence to pay So, um, part of me, hope we are going to be. Hope is basically G40. Mm-hmm. And uh, uh, G40 wanted to um, to control the MDC mm-hmm. because it was involved in its fight okay. with the ZANU PF that was in power. Okay. Because during the uh, coup, ZANU PF split into two: mm-hmm. ZANU PF in power, ZANU PF outside power. Yeah. The ZANU PF in power wanted to control the opposition mm-hmm. so that they exert revenge okay. on the ZANU PF in power, and that's why you saw. They are getting a lot of, uh, giving a lot of help to Advocate Chamisa mm-hmm. and the group. Yeah. And uh, there is a reason 
why the G40 was disaffected against me. Mm-hmm. And it has to do with the discussions that happened in South Africa okay. between the MDC and the G40. Mm-hmm. Um, and I came and reported to Advocate Chamisa that mm. uniting with the G40 was a kiss of death. Mm. Unfortunately, they got to know it. Yeah. And I became a genuine target from them. Mm-hmm. So Hopewell was with Advocate Chamisa fighting me. Oh, okay. And, and, and so on. Mm-hmm. And now, so did the advocate Chamisa knew then that, uh, you know, uh, the G40 wanted to benefit from it? I, I suspect he did because, first of all, we were uh, we told him, we gave him the report. Yeah. Uh, including what they were saying to us mm-hmm. off record. Yes. Uh, that they wanted to, they wanted to uh, take, they wanted to get involved in the party mm-hmm. and they wanted eventually to have a congress okay within the party oh and at that congress they were going to remove all the leaders mm-hmm. um and and maybe leave chamisa mm-hmm. alone and during the congress of the mdc of 2019 mm-hmm. they made sure that i was gone that was not chamisa getting rid of me okay that was the g40 getting rid of me because <laughs> interest i had said that the relation, the, the the our relationship with the G40 mm-hmm. was a kiss of death. That was the phrase I used. Mm. That these people were up to no good. So you actually had the meeting with them in yes. South Africa. Yes, I with I, the, I, who uh, Kasukwere. Some members of the G40. Yes. And what on Zembi, Patrick Joao, Those are the ones we know in South Africa. Some, yes, some of some some of them. Yes, mm-hmm. they, they, with the meeting with them. Yes, and they wanted to support. Um, Advocate Chamisa for mm-hmm. presidency. Yeah. They wanted eight MPs mm-hmm. uh, and so on. And um, when we listened to them and we read the body language, mm-hmm. um, remember at that point, uh, uh, DJ Ola, mm-hmm. I was an experienced negotiator already. <laughs> yeah. Uh, having benefited from the experiences. Yeah. I could tell somebody telling the truth and somebody was bluffing. Mm. And I came and made a report that they were no good. Mm-hmm. And that uh, we would better disassociate disassoci- dis- with them. Was it not because uh, I, you I you have uh, you have maybe you know uh, realized ah oh, these guys they want me out? No no no. I also realized that and I knew mm-hmm. that President Mnangagwa and his government mm-hmm. are very transactional people, mm-hmm. and that they were going to woo uh, uh, G40 back mm-hmm. uh, if things came bad for them. Yeah. They were going to take their people back. Beg. And uh, we were just having them very, very <laughs> temporarily. Um, but also, yes, uh, the fact that they wanted me out uh, was a factor in my thinking mm-hmm. and my attitude towards them. Okay. And uh, I'm happy that uh, I talked to, to most of them, mm-hmm. including Professor Moyo. I talked to him that uh, you guys are up to no good. Mm-hmm. It's a question of time. You are going to turn against... Uh, Chamisa. Mm-hmm. I also told Chamisa himself mm-hmm. yeah. that they are going to turn against you. Mm-hmm. Uh, he did not believe me. And But uh, you know what? Uh, uh, surprisingly, in early 19, 2019, uh, rumors emerged within the MDC alliance suggesting that uh, you were being influenced by ZANU-PF you know, to frustrate Nelson Chamisa, uh, Chamisa's leadership. Um, was there any truth uh, to these claims? And uh, what was the relationship I mean, with Chamisa like at that time? Well, I was Secretary General at that point in mm-hmm. time, and the relationship between Secretary General and the President mm-hmm. uh, is uh, a very simple one. Yeah. One is senior, one is junior, mm-hmm. uh, and one has to say, one had one had to save the other. Mm-hmm. Now, let me say this: I didn't want to say this publicly, mm-hmm. but let me just do that. I after after Buhera, mm-hmm. I went to Chamisa to tell him that I didn't approve mm-hmm. of the way that he had taken leadership. Oh yeah. But I then said to him, You are already the presidential candidate of the party, mm-hmm. um, whether by Huku and Crook. Mm-hmm. Um, and at this point in time, uh, at that point in time, I was 49. Mm-hmm. I said, I am 49. Mm-hmm. And in 10 years' time, I'll be 59. Mm-hmm. So I could still be president in mm-hmm. 10 years' time. Yeah. So I'm going to support you to be president now. Mm-hmm. Hope that you win mm-hmm. and you run your two terms. Yeah, exactly. After which I will run my term. presidents mm-hmm. as well. Mm-hmm. Uh, we shook hands mm-hmm. in the president's office yeah. in, the, in the MDC. Mm-hmm. And I said to him, then you must leave me as a secretary general. Mm-hmm. 
And uh, of course, under the influence of the G40, they wanted to get rid of me yeah. as the Secretary General. Mm -hmm. But um, I think that it was a good proposition. Mm -hmm. um, we were both going, probably going to succeed mm -hmm. uh, and so on. That was the deal. But um, uh, I don't think he thought it was uh, good enough. Uh, Senator, earlier on you mentioned with Timageta a meeting uh, with South Africa with the G40 team. Mungade would stand up with well, there were a number of things, mm -hmm. uh, including uh, the sharing of the seats, uh, but also uh, the, some members of the G40 mm -hmm. wanted to push for former First Lady Grace Mugabe to be Chamisa's deputy, mm -hmm. uh, to be the vice president. And we found that very objectionable because mm -hmm. we thought that uh, Zimbabweans it will not go down well with the Zimbabweans, given the history that we all knew at that point in mm -hmm. time. Uh, so we came again and uh, told Advocate Chamisa that that proposition was wrong. So they wanted Grace Mugabe to be the vice president of the uh, triple C of, of the MDC Alliance. Well, I don't know what. Yes, of course, it was mm -hmm. going to be. Uh, of course, because we were going to field under the MDC Alliance mm -hmm. anyway, mm -hmm. um, and they wanted the, uh, here to be the vice president to advocate Chamis, mm. to our presidential candidate. <laughs> yes. Uh, I've already told you that uh, I had uh, uh, made up with uh, Nelson mm -hmm. to say uh, he could, I could support him uh, yes. for, for presidency. Mm -hmm. um, so you wanted to be the vice president? No, no, no. I mm -hmm. was not supposed to be the vice president. Okay. I, didn't, I didn't mind about being vice president at all mm -hmm. because I was okay as, um, as, 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 um, uh, Secretary as, General SG of the mm -hmm. party, uh, and I believe uh, when you are SG of the party, you are within striking distance. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, you don't have to uh, look for any other position. Yes. Uh, so it was that which the other G40 people were pushing, mm -hmm. and which other G40 people were resisting mm -hmm. that of uh, making Grace Mugabe the 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 vice the vice president. Yes. Yes. And we found that uh, uh, very very difficult to mm -hmm. sustain. Mm -hmm. We also did not want to be. Uh, to be seen to be fighting mm -hmm. the internal wars of Zanu Yeah, that had nothing to do with us. Mm -hmm. These people had uh, oppressed us for all these years together. Yeah, now that they had fallen out, it had nothing to do with us. <laughs> but of course, to just show you how the G40 then came into the MDC, mm -hmm. you then had people like Jim Kunaka come, being appointed into the national executive of the MDC, mm. Paddington Japa Japa. Um, you had uh, Mashaya Mombe, uh, I think he was in, in, in Arare South. Mm -hmm. uh, you had uh, Zikamaima Vaire, just to name a few. Mm -hmm. You were now in the national executive. Yeah. And this is what, what caused uh, um, Advocate Chamisa's group to lose uh, the Harvest House. Oh. It's because our security teams mm -hmm. did not like it when they were made to salute. Mm -hmm. People they had been fighting with. Oh, uh, and so on. That's so, where the fight emanated from. Yes. <laughs> so to support, to, to, to salute Jim Kunaka mm -hmm. and Shadrick Mashaya Mombe, mm -hmm. who for years these guys have been fighting yes. uh, are with, mm -hmm. they did not want. And that's why the security of the MDC mm -hmm. uh, also played a part in the reposition of the harvest. Yeah. yeah. It was never the army as people. Uh, want, want people to believe. Mm -hmm. Aye, yeah, that's interesting. New information, you know where to get it first. Here on the Ola 7 podcast show. Right, in December 2020, you were elected MDCT president after, you know, defeating Tokazani Kupe in a disputed party uh, presidential election. Uh, Kupe alleged, uh, you know, widespread vote rigging. Did you rig the vote? Well, let's go to the figures. Mm -hmm. uh, Morgan Komichi had nine votes. Uh, Elias Muzuri had uh, 14 votes. Mm -hmm. Tokazani Kupe had 118 votes. Mm -hmm. I had 888 votes. Mm -hmm. It was a no match. And um, if you look at the history, mm -hmm. uh, I was probably the best candidate there. Mm -hmm. uh, I had done my homework, number one. I had fought to preserve the property of the party. Mm -hmm. I was in the course every other day fighting ag uh, against... Um, uh, the, our colleagues mm. uh, in the in the in the in the opposition now, and I was winning the cases. Mm -hmm. uh, I think we won uh, out of twenty two cases. We won twenty one cases, mm. and that record the people liked it. 
And if you look at the vote closely, mm-hmm. uh, those people uh, who voted for me probably voted for me only at an earlier mm-hmm. stage. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, I want that vote fair and square. But also... Who were voting? Uh, the, 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 it is the people who were... Um, who were uh, in in 2014? Who were delegates in 2014? Mm-hmm. When you are doing an extraordinary congress, the people who voted in the last congress mm-hmm. are the people who still vote in okay. this congress. What happens when these people are no longer there or are no longer surviving? Well, um, the constitution didn't go as far as to contemplate that mm-hmm. eventuality, uh, and a, an extraordinary congress comes in between two congresses yeah. of five years each. Mm-hmm. It's quite rare to have everybody yes. die or resign yeah. in mass in that period of time. Mm-hmm. Uh, but um, Dr. Kupe and uh, Komichi and Muzuri mm-hmm. suspended me uh, during the Congress process. Yeah. And they suspended me as uh, Secretary General. Mm-hmm. Uh, I did not contest the suspension yeah. uh, at that point in time because the position I now wanted mm-hmm. was that of President. And sometimes people don't uh, uh, appreciate when people uh, do a better campaign. Mm-hmm. I did a better campaign. I went throughout the country, sh- saw the structures, sold my manifesto. Mm-hmm. And uh, my manifesto was forward-looking. Mm-hmm. I wasn't talking about how bad Kupe was, how bad Mzuri was, mm-hmm. how bad Komich was. They were spending a lot of their time on Monzora and mm-hmm. how bad and how, how unsuitable I was. Mm-hmm. I was talking about where I wanted to put the party, yeah, uh, and so on. So I wear, I won fair and square. But but but, but if you look at your um, uh, your rallies, you know the attendance was you know low. Yes, the the rallies, the attendance went went low mm-hmm. because let's face it, the MDC split mm-hmm. um, as a result of the 2020 ruling of the Supreme Court. Mm-hmm. And uh, unfortunately, uh, we were victims of propaganda. Mm -hmm. And the propaganda was coming from two sources. That is our colleagues, former colleagues of the MDC Mm -hmm. and the G40. The G40 had an elaborate machinery uh, that Mugabe used to use. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, we were no match to that. Mm -hmm. And we were uh, completely, completely uh, outclassed when it came to the propaganda. Yeah. But... That doesn't mean that we were wrong. We were correct, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and in fact, uh, my predictions came to be to, to came to pass. I said to Advocate Chamisa, the G40 are going to go back to Zanu PF. Mm-hmm. Jim Tukunaga is going back to Zanu PF. Um, uh, Jabun has gone back to Zanu PF. Mm-hmm. You know, most of these people have gone back to Zanu PF. Yeah. and there is rumor that Kasukuere and Jonathan may be and Mzembi may mm-hmm. be going back to Zanu PF. Mm-hmm. So they were they probably wanted us as a temporary uh, uh, bus stop mm-hmm. uh, on their way to jo- rejoining their party. The Zanu PF party. Yes. So moving on, you took the Zimbabwe Elect- uh, Electoral Commission, ZEC, uh, to court over the delimitation uh, you know, report. Um, but the challenge was uh, dismissed by the Constitutional Court. You know, What were your concerns you know, with the report? Um, and what do you plan to do in the next electoral cycle? Well, first of all, the constitution says that a delimitation report must follow population census. Mm-hmm. So there must be census results. You must know how many people are in Cholocho or in Nyanga mm-hmm. or in Pikita, for yeah. example. Um, but uh, the regrettable thing is that Zimbabwe had, had a, a census mm-hmm. in 2022. Yeah. And at the time of delimitation, the census results were not out. Mm-hmm. So it was just groping in the dark. You don't know how many people are in which constituents mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. so on. That was objection number one. Yeah. Objection number two, every constituency, according to the constitution, must have more or less the same number of, re- of registered voters. Mm-hmm. Uh, and the same number of people even. Uh, and uh, uh, if there is to be any variance, mm-hmm. that variance must not exceed 20%. Okay. We were able to demonstrate mm-hmm. that in 199 out of 210, mm-hmm. we, had, we had problems. For example, Bulawayo South had, um, uh, had uh, the difference between Bulawayo South and Mount Pleasant mm-hmm. was 49%. Somewhere as high as fifty percent, mm-hmm. the outrageous one was sixty-three percent. Yes. So this was a this was a, an item for rigging. Mm-hmm. This was a, a ploy to rig the results. Then the description of the polling stations. 
they were no longer described by name. Mm-hmm. They were described by codes. And some of the codes, if you put them on the on the on the, on the GPS and so on and so mm-hmm. forth, uh, you found Weza was in the Indian Ocean, for example. <laughs> and, and, and we, we were able to prove that. Yeah. And we were also able to prove that in Bulawayo, for example, mm-hmm. there were 3,000 households mm-hmm. that were not in any constituents. 3,000? 3,000, 3, yes, households. Mm-hmm. And that would do roughly translate into 15,000 votes. 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 Mm-hmm. And that is explains why Zan, uh, 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 Bulawayo lost a seat. Mm. Why, why it, 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 it did not have, uh, it, it had one seat less than yes. 2018. Mm-hmm. Uh, we raised this uh, first with the parliament. Mm-hmm. Every member of parliament agreed with our findings of the delimitation. Mm-hmm. We even produced an adverse report. Yeah. Um, I did end there. I even went to confront mm-hmm. President Munangagwa mm-hmm. um, at the State House to say this is wrong. Yeah. One, it will lead to disputed results. Mm-hmm. Two, it will lead to further international ostracization of Zimbabwe. Mm-hmm. Uh, and if you are serious that we want sanctions out, mm-hmm. uh, we cannot have a delimitation report like this. Mm-hmm. Uh, and uh, of course... People thought that we wanted to delay the elections, mm. including the press. Yeah. They then said we wanted to delay the elections. Um, Advocate Chamisa, of course, thought mm-hmm. that uh, uh, the, there was no room for rigging. Mm-hmm. And we even said that because of this delimitation, the triple C was going to split. Mm. I actually said it. Mm-hmm. And it was not difficult to see how, because of the delimitation, mm-hmm. there was... Uh, Overlapping of the of the of the of the constituencies, mm-hmm. <laughs> and then suddenly you found Rusty Makam and Tendai meet in one constituency, mm. and uh, a lot of value judgment was involved, and Merekamana and so on. It was a response to the problems created by delimitation. Mm. Um, but uh, it came to pass what we had we had said about delimitation. Now, uh, the Supreme Court, uh, the Constitutional Court, mm-hmm. uh, said in its judgment. There is no judgment right yes. now, but it's ruling. Mm-hmm. It says we refuse to hear you. Mm. It, it didn't say I was wrong. Yeah. It said we refuse to, to hear, hear you. you. Uh, <laughs> and that's why I said the constitutional court at that point in time mm-hmm. made a political judgment. Yeah. What that meant is that the delimitation we then brought the delimitation back to court. Mm-hmm. It is lying in the high court right now, mm-hmm. and. Um, uh, it remains to be seen whether we should uh, uh, carry on with that case. Mm-hmm. But remember, the delimitation report is going to govern the next election, the 2028 election. Mm. So do, do, do you think by the 2028 election, the delimitation you know, issue... We should will... have sorted that out. Mm-hmm. We should have sorted that are you, out. Are you, are you making progress on, on that? We, we, we will. We will. Mm-hmm. There's, there's still plenty of time. But okay. What surprised us mm-hmm. was that the Triple C then sent Jeremiah Bamu to court mm-hmm. to fight against our case mm. and support the delimitation. Um, very, very strange indeed, mm-hmm. where people are in in the opposition. Mm-hmm. But maybe we had not explained the delimitation well. Oh yeah. Maybe Zimbabweans didn't understand us the delimitation, well. Yeah. But we meant well, mm-hmm. and history has come to yeah. um, to prove us correct. Mm-hmm. Wow. Uh, in the 2023 elections, you withdraw from the uh, you withdrew from the uh, presidential uh, race, describing the elections as a sham and a uh, farce. You know, um, why do you think uh, they were a sham? And did you didn't you respond um, disappoint? I mean, your your supporters by withdrawing? Well, uh, I I I faced a, a, a few things. Mm-hmm. Number one, I was being victimized by Zek mm-hmm. uh, for having embarrassed them in the in the limitation case yeah uh and that's why they disqualified 87 mm-hmm. of our candidates yeah uh, and i said i can't go to a presidential election without 87 of my candidates mm-hmm. on a point of principle if i am to be out i'll be out with them yes i made a point of principle mm-hmm. and i went further to say participating in an election like this mm-hmm is uh, an act of foolish bravery. Mm-hmm. Again, I was ridiculed yeah. by, uh, especially in the social media, mm-hmm. uh, to say, no, 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 you are afraid of elections. Mm-hmm. Uh, I talked to one of the presidential candidates who told me that God had told them mm. that they were going to win the election. <laughs> and I said, how do you know that the same God has not sent me to you to talk to you? Mm-hmm. Uh, and so on. But 
there was a lot of emotion mm. there was again problem of people not listening to one another yeah. which is a a, 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 a regrettable malady mm-hmm. of the opposition mm-hmm. we must listen to each other yeah. uh, better this time and uh, we still have the delimitation there mm-hmm. I would love it if uh, my colleagues within the Triple C yeah. were to join me in the fight for the delimitation. Mm. Never mind who thought the idea. The idea maybe you need a, a dialogue first so that you, you 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 see or you maybe you understand if you are on the same page yes. uh, and also you, you have the same understanding of the delimitation. Yes. yes, because then after the after the delimitation mm-hmm. fight uh, and our withdrawal, uh, people. Who, made bold statements to mm-hmm. say there is no rigging going to take place mm. it was the opposition saying that uh, and when the opposition lost now mm-hmm. um, it then said no it's going to take the matter to the constitutional court mm-hmm. it never did and then after that uh, we were told that sadak was going to come uh, to do fresh elections in mm-hmm. zimbabwe anybody who has read the constitution mm-hmm. of zimbabwe who has read the founding documents of sadak mm knows that that is total total rubbish it doesn't happen <laughs> uh, but, but even sadak going uh-huh. by the history of sadak mm-hmm. in 2008 where we had that bloodletting mm-hmm. that blatant disregard of the law mm-hmm. they never uh, uh, they never nullified president mugabe's election mm. they kept him as president mm-hmm. sadak never does that yes. so people were told that there are, there, are, there are going to be elections <laughs> sadak came and guess what the president yeah. the, the, cha- the chairman of sadak is now emerson munangagwa himself exactly. and we ought to have known mm-hmm. that the because it is a rotational yeah. uh, 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 chair presidency it was coming to zimbabwe yeah. anyway yeah so how we would, people would lie to the masses to that extent so now that uh, the president is now the chairman of the um, sadak um is opposition parties are you now uh or do you think you would go to uh president uh, nagagwa uh, to report maybe <laughs> your, your 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 grievances no 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 there's no problem there's no problem we, <laughs> we can take matters to sadak uh being the chairman of sadak does not mean that he is the one who sets the agenda only mm-hmm. uh there is still the council of ministers yes mm-hmm. granted uh, frederick shawa is the chairperson of the council of ministers but mm-hmm. there are, i think 16 yeah ministers there yes and when it comes to the uh, uh, sadak itself it mm-hmm. is 16 presidents yeah so yes we can approach uh sadak the heads of state we can ap- approach the secretariat mm-hmm. we can approach the council of ministers mm-hmm. and why not why can't we approach mnangagwa himself yeah, exactly. as long as we genuinely hold to these uh, 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 things mm-hmm. for example i i can still face him again mm-hmm. about the delimitation yes i can still face him again on the impact of unfree and unfair elections in zimbabwe mm-hmm. my country is under sanctions I am under sanctions too mm. for an offense I haven't committed. Mm-hmm. I want sanctions to go. But Zidera says if you want us to remove the sanctions, you must hold free, fair and credible elections. Mm. So yes, we must be able to confront President Mnangagwa mm-hmm. and I'm sure uh, we haven't tried it and it has failed. Yeah. Uh, I'm still sh- I, I I'm sure that uh, we can make an appointment to see him in his capacity mm-hmm. as a leader of Sadak. Great. And uh, let me just quickly move on. Uh, what's your relationship like now with uh, Advocate Nelson Chamisa? Well, Advocate Nelson Chamisa is my brother. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't think that uh, I have any ill feeling towards him. Mm-hmm. Uh, he is my brother. He's a member within the opposition. Mm-hmm. Uh, I don't approve of certain strategic blunders that he has made, yeah. which have made us get to this post mm-hmm. position. Sorry. Yeah. Um, had he listened to me and the constitution, we would not be where we are, where the party effectively split. Mm-hmm. Had he listened to me, we would not have taken G40 yeah. on board at all mm-hmm. and suffered the ignominy of the G40 going back home. We ought to have seen that. Mm-hmm. Um, but um, I have no problems with him. Uh, if the MDC mm-hmm. could discuss with the ZANU-PF mm-hmm. in the GNU mm-hmm. and at parliament, why not with our brothers and sisters within the opposition so do you, have tried. Uh, 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 do you think you you are going to sit down with Nelson Chamisa anytime soon 
Well, I, I am not so sure as to when, but of course it is part of my agenda mm-hmm. uh, to sit down with him, to talk to him, um, and to say that uh, the bloodletting within the opposition mm-hmm. has been enough. Yeah. Now uh, the people of Zimbabwe need us. And this is the speech I made at a passion Jawa's mother mm-hmm. as funeral. Yeah. And I said to Advocate Chamisa, uh, we have to resolve the problems of Zimbabwe together. Mm-hmm. We have to fight on behalf of the people together mm-hmm. and so on. Then so next, so you're going to, to, to join forces again? The, the next morning, the next morning, mm-hmm. uh, Fazai Mayere was asking for my head to be examined. Mm-hmm. Uh, Jameson Timper was uttering a, a worse insult mm-hmm. and so on. So when you want to work together, you have to look at a few things. Mm-hmm. You have to agree on certain principles. Mm-hmm. For for me, what is important is democracy yeah. and the democratic practice. Mm-hmm. Number one. Number two, we have to go uh, uh, with the agenda of social democracy, mm-hmm. the rights of the workers, the welfare of the people of Zimbabwe, mm-hmm. and so on. We have to have an ideology, mm-hmm. and we have to go back to the ideology of the MDC regarding uh, the issues of leadership. Mm-hmm. The people dis- have to decide. And uh, we have to work together. Mm -hmm. I don't think the opposition has any choice but to work together. Mm -hmm. But people must stop insulting one another Mm -hmm. day in, day out on social media. It does not advance their cause. It does not make their argument better and so on. Mm -hmm. And our supporters have to make sure that they bring leaders together. Mm -hmm. Right now, our supporters are dividing the leaders. Mm. Yes, people are competing uh, with uh, hailing insults mm-hmm. at, at one another. Yeah. I saw the insult uh, against poor Ibo Mangu mm. mm. That is uncalled for. Mm-hmm. That is uncalled for. And that does not help anyone. Mm. It doesn't help Advocate Chamisa. It does not help Opo uh, It doesn't help anyone at all. Mm. So, um, are you now talking, uh, or do you guys talk with Nathan Chamisa, or maybe phone, email, or whatever? Well, we we have met, uh, we have met uh, in on at social events, mm-hmm. and we have talked. Uh, mm-hmm. Of course, not in serious detail. Yeah, but, um, we have we have talked to each other. Are you enemies? And, no, we are not enemies at all. Are you friends? Well, a uh, friend is uh, a bit too much because mm-hmm. I don't visit him at his house. Yeah, I don't go to lunch with him, mm-hmm. I don't share a beer with him, for yeah. example, yeah. Um, which is what friends do. Mm-hmm. I don't discuss with him progress at my farm. Yes. Uh, but uh, we do have sufficient history together. Given a chance, yes. would you want to work together as a, 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 a one political party with Nelson Chamisa? Well, I, I, don't, I don't see uh, we can work together in a variety of forms. Mm-hmm. Uh, I can't prescribe a, what mm-hmm. form it can be because yeah. That's also negotiating in bad faith. Mm-hmm. Uh, but uh, working together, the opposition must work together. Mm-hmm. We must uh, bury the hatchet. Mm-hmm. We must uh, now understand mm-hmm. that we need one another. Yeah. Uh, each one of us, in their own way, mm-hmm. have demonstrated the certain abilities yeah. that will be good for our movement. Mm-hmm. the little things that make us giants in our industry. We put in the extra mile of service so your car can go the extra mile of performance. Our aim is to make our stopovers feel like home. Giant Petroleum. Limitless Energy.